Chapter 2101, that made her heart skip a beat. Hi, Mr. Quarles. She smiled and waved at him. Is it convenient to visit your company? Ethan suddenly opened the car door and got out. Josephine didn't dare to bring him around in the company, so she politely said, it is not convenient since it's office hours now. But there is a coffee shop next door. We can go there. Okay. Ethan raised his eyebrows and got out of the car. Josephine was dressed in workwear today. She had a slim fit suit jacket and pants on, which showcased her attractive figure. With that, Josephine led him into the cafe and they chose a seat next to the window. Josephine then asked him what coffee he wanted. Just give me whatever flavor you like, Ethan said. He wasn't being picky and chose to have her favorite drink. She ordered two cups of regular coffee and sat down. She smiled and asked Ethan, who was sitting in front of her, Mr. Quarles, your job seems to be flexible. Yes, I can work as long as I have a laptop with me. I don't need a fixed office location. Ethan nodded and mentioned. Josephine knew she shouldn't envy the flexibility that he had because he was the business owner. Only business owners had such freedom. Just then, Josephine's phone rang and she answered it, Hello. Josephine, where are you? Come back to your seat soon. There's still a pile of videos to be edited. I need them before the end of the day. Katrina's voice could be heard from the other end. It's lunchtime now and I have the right to take a break, Josephine replied. I'm just reminding you so that you can get it done by this afternoon, Katrina said and hung up. Josephine sighed in frustration, and Ethan could tell from her phone call and expression that she was clearly having a tough time at work. Are you having any difficulties at work? Ethan asked her as he picked up his coffee mug. Josephine lifted up the mug of coffee that was just served and took a sip. It's not difficulties, it's more of a challenge. One of the female anchors in our station is stepping down, and I want to compete for her position. Do you have confidence? Ethan asked curiously. Josephine leaned closer to him and whispered, of course, but unfortunately, one of the competitors is the director's sister-in-law. I'm afraid that there would be nepotism, and that I wouldn't stand a chance at all. Hearing that, Ethan looked at her sympathetically and softly asked, do you really want to be a news anchor? I do. This is my dream. Josephine's eyes lit up as she spoke. Do you need my help? Ethan smiled. At first, Josephine was surprised, then she thought for a moment before refusing. No, I don't need it. In terms of work, I still want to succeed based on my ability and credentials. It's getting late and I have to go back to work. Mr. Quarles, do you want to stay here for a while? Ethan smirked as he looked at her before glancing at his watch. I have a meeting to attend soon. Is that so? Then let's end our meeting here today, and I'll treat you to coffee next time. Josephine smiled. Okay, let's go, Ethan said while standing up. As they walked, Josephine was being thoughtful and opened the coffee shop door for him, which made Ethan feel like a guest. He was amused but at the same time, he couldn't do anything about it. Josephine walked toward the company building, thinking that Ethan would return to his car, but to her surprise, he was following her. Mr. Quarles, your car is over there. Josephine thought he had forgotten where he had parked and kindly reminded him. Hearing that, Ethan smiled and pointed to her company's entrance, TM going inside for a meeting, Josephine was stunned upon hearing that. The entire building was their company's office area. Is he here to discuss a collaboration? She pointed to her company building and asked, you are coming to my company for a meeting. Um hum, Ethan replied in a very deep and sexy voice. Josephine couldn't guess what meeting he was going to attend, but she didn't want to pry too much, so she made a gesture and said, come on then. Ethan followed her and they went in. Suddenly, all of the six female receptionists were attracted to him and looked over. Josephine intentionally kept a distance from him by standing half a meter away. Ethan smirked upon noticing that. When they reached the elevator, Josephine rushed over from behind him to hold the elevator door for him like a server. Ethan tried to suppress the laughter as he was amused by Josephine's behavior. When they entered the elevator, Josephine asked him, which floor, please? Sixteenth floor, Ethan replied. Josephine blinked her eyes when she realized that it was where the company's executives held meetings. 
While pressing the button for the 16th floor, she also pressed the button for the 8th floor. Finally, they arrived on the 8th floor. Josephine quickly said goodbye, I'll leave first. Goodbye. Goodbye, Ethan replied in a deep voice. As soon as Josephine got off the elevator, she felt a little dazed. Her mind was full of questions about what he was doing in the company and why he was going to the meeting room on the 16th floor. Is he here to meet a client? As Josephine walked, she almost bumped into someone and that person was angered. Josephine, are you blind? Can't you watch where you're going? Josephine sure was unlucky. The person she almost bumped into was Katrina. Look at you, and you dare think about getting promoted with this kind of behavior. You must be dreaming. Katrina sneered. Following that, Josephine let out a sigh and walked back to her desk. Ren was curious and asked, where did you go? Why did you just come back now? I was meeting a friend at the coffee shop downstairs, Josephine replied. What kind of friend? A male friend. Ren teased, is Luke still pursuing you? I ran into him at the wedding, Josephine replied. He's not bad. At least he's from a wealthy family. You should stop being picky and might as well go for him. You're getting old so you shouldn't be too choosy, Ren said. Ren, this is about my marriage. I have to marry someone I love, not just someone who loves me. This concerns my happiness for the rest of my life. I don't lack money. I just want to be with someone I'm in love with, Josephine said. Don't be too naive. Do you think you can find true love in this day and age? Love can't fill your stomach, but money can fulfill all your material needs and buy your happiness and contentment. I think Luke is not bad. Ren thought Josephine's standards were too high. Anyway, I won't settle for less. I want to be with someone I love. Josephine sighed. Tisk, I predict you will become an old lonely woman, Ren, who was engaged, hoped Josephine would find a partner soon so they could have common topics to talk about. I don't mind being an old lonely woman. Being alone is quite nice, Josephine said nonchalantly. Meanwhile, Katrina came to deliver some documents to the office on the 16th floor. As she walked past the conference room, she couldn't help but peek inside through the slightly open blinds. Her jaw dropped when she saw Ethan inside. Oh my god, where did this handsome man come from? That man happened to be in a meeting with Atticus. The quick-witted Katrina noticed an assistant carrying tea and she approached her and said, I'll take the tea, you can go do something else. The assistant happened to have something to attend to and handed her the tea. Katrina then knocked on the door nervously and excitedly before pushing it open. Even though she didn't look directly at Ethan, her heart was already racing. Mr. Kowalski, here's your tea, Katrina handed a cup of tea to Atticus Kowalski, the director, and then handed another to Ethan. Katrina boldly took the opportunity to steal a glance at Ethan and she almost fainted right after. Ethan was so good-looking that he could be the reincarnation of Apollo. His face must have been carved by God himself. He was just too handsome. Cat, you can leave now. Atticus had to remind his sister-in-law to leave. Katrina quickly walked out of the room with a flushed face while pressing her chest to calm her heartbeat. Oh my god, he's the perfect husband I've always dreamed of. When Atticus comes out later, I must ask him who that man is and ask him to introduce that man to me. At this moment, in the conference room, Atticus handed over a cigarette, but Ethan waved his hand. I don't smoke. Have some tea then, Mr. Quarles. Atticus didn't dare neglect this precious investor who came to their door. Their TV station's funds were tight now, and they had already started to look for external investors. They didn't know that they would find one so quickly. Moreover, if this gentleman invested, he would inject a large amount of capital and directly purchase 52% of the company's shares, becoming the largest shareholder. Mr. Quarles, if I may ask, why did you choose our TV station? Atticus was also confused, for Ethan's status and wealth were such that even if he were to invest in 10 famous TV stations, it would just be a matter of words, but he chose their station. For personal reasons, if there are no other issues, we can sign the contract anytime, and the funds will be transferred to your account within an hour, Ethan said calmly. Atticus had been looking for investors for almost a year now, and finally, a tycoon had come. How could he let him go? So, he immediately nodded. 
Okay, I'll prepare the contract right away. From now on, Mr. Quarles, you will have the highest executive power in the company, and I will follow your orders completely. After a nod, Ethan picked up the teacup to take a sip. Okay, you go ahead and prepare the documents. I'll take a look around at my leisure. All right, Mr. Quarles, do you need our vice president to accompany you? No need. I'll just walk around by myself. Ethan waved his hand. With a smile, Atticus replied, Okay. I'll notify you when the contract is ready. He hurried back to his office to prepare the investment contract, while Ethan stood by the floor-to-ceiling window, drinking tea and looking at the scenery outside. For him, this place was his vacation spot, as he had taken a six-month leave from his family. After he pushed the door open, he remembered that Josephine had stopped on the eighth floor earlier, so her workplace should also be on that floor. He walked toward the direction of the elevator and pressed the button for the eighth floor. On the other hand, with the warm afternoon sun shining in, Josephine held her face, struggling to stay awake. Even coffee can't save me. This must be a post-vacation work syndrome. I'm just so tired. Her seat was in a very good position. When the warm afternoon sun shone on her, she couldn't resist the urge to doze off anymore. She looked around and saw that her team leader was not in her seat, so she quickly found a comfortable position and fell asleep. She must have been really tired, as she drifted to sleep in seconds. Meanwhile, at the elevator, the female employees in the corridor were buzzing with excitement as Ethan appeared. He politely asked one of the female employees, Excuse me, may I know where Josephine's desk is? Oh, Josephine. She's in the last row of seats in the large working space, near the window, the female employee replied, her heart filled with envy. He's here to find Josephine. I wonder what their relationship is. The moment he walked into the working space, the whole bustling room seemed to instantly quiet down as everyone stopped what they were doing to look at the handsome man who had just appeared. Such a handsome man. However, there was one person who missed seeing his handsome figure as she was currently asleep on her desk. Meanwhile, Ren had just returned to her seat with some documents when she saw a man walking toward her from the aisle. Her first thought was, he looks familiar. Where have I seen this handsome man? At once, she recalled that she had seen him in a photo on Josephine's phone. She thought that Josephine wasn't in her seat, but when she stood up and looked, she realized that Josephine was actually sleeping on her desk. At the same time, Ethan had already noticed Josephine. When he saw her sleeping on the desk, an affectionate and nonchalant smile played on his lips. He walked over to her desk and quietly looked at her sleeping face without disturbing her. By now, everyone knew that this handsome man was here to find Josephine, but she was actually sleeping during work hours. To not let her continue to be embarrassed, Ren kindly poked her with a pen. Josephine was happily riding unicorns in her dream when she felt someone touching her arm. So, she muttered in her sleep, what? Joey, wake up. Ren tried harder to wake her up. Only when Josephine heard Ren's voice did she realize that she wasn't at home but at work. She quickly opened her eyes, her long eyelashes fluttering like butterfly wings, and she woke up instantly. Then, she sensed that someone was standing in front of her desk, so she looked up in shock. As soon as she saw the man, she was petrified and wished she could bury herself in a hole. F asterisk CK. When did Ethan come? And he's standing right in front of me. Did I drool? She quickly wiped her mouth, thankfully finding nothing. Why are you here, Mr. Quarles? While blushing, she stood up but didn't dare look at him. With a smile, Ethan answered, no reason. I just wanted to see you. His low and husky voice sounded like a professional voice actor. Are you done with your meeting? She finally looked at him, meeting his deep and mesmerizing eyes, which made her face even hotter. Not yet. After saying that, he flipped through the documents on her desk and asked, are you not busy? At this moment, her face was burning. I am busy, busy sleeping. Here you are, Mr. Quarles. Mr. Kowalski sent me to look for you. Atticus assistant came downstairs to find Ethan. Okay, Ethan replied before turning to Josephine. I'll go upstairs first. Okay, take care, Josephine answered and watched him leave. As soon as he left, five to six faces gathered around her desk, all clamoring to ask, 
Who is he, Josephine? What's your relationship with him? Is he pursuing you, or are you pursuing him? He looks very rich. What business is he discussing with Mr. Kowalski? Her head was spinning at this moment, as she was surrounded and felt a little suffocated. Immediately, she stood up and answered, I'm not close to him. We're just acquaintances. Stop guessing around. No one believed her words. If they're not close to each other, why would this handsome man come over and say hello to her? And his eyes clearly showed a hint of affection toward her. As the others left, Ren whispered to Josephine, Joey, does the husband of your dreams look like this? Josephine burst into laughter. I dare not dream such a beautiful dream. Exactly what kind of relationship do you have with him? Tell me. I promise not to spread it around. There's really nothing between us. We just met at a wedding. He came here today for a meeting and just stopped by to say hello to me, Josephine explained, feeling a little guilty as she recalled the kiss she shared with Ethan. That should be a dream, right? On the other hand, Ethan elegantly signed his name and became the largest shareholder of Tribus TV. After that, he turned to Atticus and said, I heard that your company has a vacant female anchor position. I would like to recommend someone for the job. Who do you have in mind, Mr. Quarles? Josephine Jacobson. Instantly, Atticus was stunned and finally seemed to understand why Ethan had invested in their company. Did he invest in us for the sake of Josephine? She does have what it takes for the job. Okay, we will talk to her immediately, and we will train her if she is interested. He didn't dare oppose his suggestion. Then, he continued, to extend our warm welcome to you, I plan to treat all the company's mid to high level employees to dinner tonight so we can get to know each other better. Sure, just don't forget to invite Josephine, Ethan reminded him. Atticus nodded and bowed as he replied, of course. Josephine is our key training target. Of course, she needs to be there. Great, I have some other things to attend to. Contact me tonight, Ethan said as he stood up and left as if his visit was just a casual chat. Yet, in the contract Ethan just signed, he committed a total of $725 million to the project. After seeing Ethan off, Atticus instantly breathed a sigh of relief as his struggling TV station finally received a new lease on life. Moreover, the projects that he had put on hold now had the funds to get started. He could finally showcase his abilities. He called his assistant over. Call Josephine over. I want to talk to her. When Josephine received the call from Atticus' assistant, she was a little puzzled. Why did Mr. Kowalski suddenly want to talk to me? With a lot of questions in her mind, she went up to the director's office. As soon as she entered, she saw the usually serious Atticus smiling at her and greeting her, Hi, Josephine. Come on in. Is there something you need from me, Mr. Kowalski? Have a sit. There's something I want to talk to you about. Atticus pointed to the couch and sat himself down as well. He looked like he had become ten years younger, and even the bald spot in the middle of his head seemed livelier. After she sat down, she couldn't help feeling nervous. What is it, Mr. Kowalski? Well, Josephine, can you first tell me what kind of relationship you have with Mr. Quarles? At once, she became speechless. Why is everyone asking me this question today? Even Mr. Kowalski, what kind of relationship could I have with Ethan? Aren't we just acquaintances? We're just acquaintances, she smiled. Mr. Quarles is pursuing you, isn't he? Hearing that, her face flushed, and she quickly waved her hand. No, no, there's nothing like that. However, Atticus looked at Josephine very seriously and said, Tell me the truth, Josephine. Are you two dating? This is very important. Her heart skipped a beat, and then she told the truth, we're really not. We're just friends who have had a meal or two together. So, Mr. Quarles is pursuing you then. I, I'm not sure about that. She didn't dare simply answer this question. If the answer was no, she would only embarrass herself. At this moment, Atticus scrutinized her face with sharp eyes. In his eyes, she was a pretty and energetic young girl, and it was not surprising that Ethan would pursue her. Josephine was getting uncomfortable being scrutinized by him, so she forced a smile and asked, Mr. Kowalski, is Mr. Quarles your guest? Aren't you guys close? You should know what he's here for. He didn't answer her directly. When she heard his reply, she chuckled awkwardly. 
I was just asking. Get off work at 3 p.m. later. Go home early and dress yourself up. I have a social engagement for you tonight. At once, her brain went blank for a few seconds. What kind of social engagement requires me to dress up? I'm just a small reporter. I don't think I need to be there even if there is an important social engagement. After all, our company has several well-known female anchors with good looks and figures. Or, you don't have to go home. Instead, go to the dress shop next door. I'll call them and ask them to dress you up. I don't think that's necessary, Mr. Kowalski. It is necessary, absolutely necessary. You can go now. After saying that, Atticus waved his hand to dismiss her. Perturbed, she left the office, still unable to understand why she was being asked to attend a social engagement. Shortly after she left the office, Katrina came in and asked directly, Atticus, who was that handsome man in the conference room with you just now? After a chuckle, he asked, why? You're interested in him. I'm already at that age to marry, Atticus. Ivanka keeps asking you to introduce me to someone. Can't you introduce that handsome man to me? She said with a hopeful face. Atticus looked at his sister-in-law's face, which was quite pretty, but someone as wealthy as Ethan was out of her league. It's not that I don't want to introduce him to you, Kat, but the gap between your status and that of Mr. Quarles is too great. Don't underestimate me, Atticus. Just introduce him to me. She persisted. All right, here's what I can do. We have a banquet among the high-level executives tonight, and Mr. Quarles will be there too. You can come along. That's the most I can do. To capture his heart, you'll have to show him what you've got. Really? Tonight? Can I leave work early and go home to dress up? Katrina asked quickly. Okay, okay. Atticus let her leave early. After Josephine returned to her desk, she continued to work absentmindedly. She looked at her phone several times, wanting to ask. Ethan what he was doing at the company and if he would be at the dinner tonight that Atticus had asked her to join. Could it be that Mr. Kowalski thought Ethan has feelings for me, so he wants me to be Ethan's companion tonight? I think this is highly possible. What did Mr. Kowalski want with you? Ren asked curiously. It's nothing. Just work-related. Is he promoting you? I believe her acknowledges your abilities. Just then, Josephine checked the time, and it was already 4.30 p.m. So, she got up and said, Ren, I have something to do. I'll leave early today. She drove to a dress shop contracted by the company. As soon as she entered, a service staff greeted her and helped her with makeup and selecting dresses. She picked a classic black mini dress that could be worn for both daily wear and dinner parties. After staying there for a while, it was almost 5.30 p.m. She received a text message from Atticus with the address of a restaurant, a five-star one. Seeing that, she wondered, will I see Ethan tonight? With that thought in mind, she left the dress shop and drove straight to the hotel. Meanwhile, inside the hotel, Ethan also received the address sent by Atticus, along with a message saying, Mr. Quarles, we'll be waiting for you at this restaurant. Josephine is here too. When he read the second part of the message, his eyes lit up with a strong anticipation for the night. On the other hand, Josephine was tidying up her dress and getting into an elevator. Just as it was about to close, someone rushed in from the opposite, and the elevator opened again. To her surprise, it was Katrina, dressed in a sexy outfit. When Katrina saw that Josephine was also wearing a mini dress, her eyes flickered with surprise, and she asked, Where are you going? To the company dinner. What about you? Josephine asked. Incredulously, Katrina raised an eyebrow. You're also invited. Since she had been out in the afternoon and went to look for Atticus as soon as she returned to the company, she had not heard about the event of Ethan going downstairs to look for Josephine. Mr. Kowalski personally invited me. I didn't want to go, but he insisted, replied Josephine. HMPH. Well, let me make this clear. Among the guests who will be here tonight, the tallest and most handsome man is mine, so you better not try to compete with me. Katrina said with a commanding look while crossing her arms in front of her chest. Hearing that, Josephine waved her off. I'm not interested. When Katrina sized up Josephine's outfit, she couldn't help but feel slightly nervous. Josephine usually only wore shirts and jeans. 
Tonight, yet she exuded a flamboyant and bold beauty tonight after dressing up. That gave Katrina a sense of crisis. Mr. Quarles won't take interest in her, will he? The two of them arrived at the restaurant together, while Atticus had already arrived early. As he looked at the two beauties of the company, he thought, this will definitely satisfy Mr. Quarles. Here, come here, your mission tonight is to make our major shareholder happy. What major shareholder? asked Katrina. Mr. Quarles, the one you want to meet. He has invested in our company and entered as the largest shareholder. Atticus revealed the truth, so that Josephine and Katrina could understand the situation and serve this major shareholder better. Josephine's eyes widened in surprise, and she asked, Are you serious, Mr. Kowalski? Do I look like I'm joking? Of course, I'm serious. He will be in charge of everything in the company from now on. Your chance has come, Josephine. You have to try your best to serve him well tonight. At his words, Josephine's face flushed. What does he mean by, serve him well? Does he mean I have to be Ethan's companion throughout dinner? On the contrary, Katrina was confident. Don't worry, Atticus. I will definitely serve him well. Hearing that, Josephine turned around to see Katrina's ambitious smile and thought to herself, does she want to sleep with Ethan? Deep down, Josephine was still shocked. Why did Ethan invest in our company? Our company has been struggling in the TV industry for the past few years. With his investment insight, he couldn't have targeted our company. So, the meeting that he mentioned was about this investment, which makes him suddenly our largest shareholder. In other words, he's my big boss and immediate superior now, right? At this thought, she felt a sense of inexplicable happiness. After all, having a familiar face in the company's top management would be beneficial for her promotion. Likewise, Katrina was also pleasantly surprised. I didn't expect that handsome man to become our company's boss, but with that, we can meet and interact with each other more often at work. Will I eventually become his wife? Just thinking about it made her so happy that she was on cloud nine. She had already started to imagine scenes of her dating Ethan at the company in the future. At this moment, the two vice presidents and four department managers of the company had arrived, and they were ready to particularly put their focus on this major shareholder of theirs tonight. Everyone took their seats, and just as Josephine was about to pull out the last chair to sit down, Atticus beckoned her over and said, Josephine, your seat is here. It turned out to be on the left side of the main seat. Seeing that, she quickly waved her hand and said, No, it's okay, Mr. Kowalski. I'll just sit here. Come over here. This is your seat, Atticus insisted. I'll sit there then, Atticus. Different from Josephine, Katrina rushed into sitting in that seat. The main seat must be for Mr. Quarles and sitting next to him means that I'm one step closer to my dream. However, her volunteering only earned her a glare from Atticus. In the end, Josephine had no choice but to take the seat next to the main seat. As soon as she sat down, the vice presidents couldn't help but cast admiring glances at her. With a pendant lamp shining on her, it made her fair and beautiful skin even more attractive. On the other hand, Katrina secretly resented and glared at Josephine. At the same time, she wondered, why does Atticus arrange the seats in such a way that gives Josephine the chance to get close to Mr. Quarles? Shouldn't he be prioritizing me, his family member? After a while, the door to the private room opened. Ethan walked in wearing a black shirt and vest, with a limited edition watch on his wrist, emitting a cool luster. His innate elegance exuded exceptional nobility. He's here. Josephine's heart couldn't help but beat faster, while Katrina was excitedly covering her mouth. She couldn't believe how sexy and wild Ethan looked at night. He's so hot. The moment he came in, his gaze immediately landed on the charming figure sitting under the light beside the main seat. Josephine just happened to look up, and their eyes met. Right then, she stood up with everyone else to greet him. Welcome, Mr. Quarles. Please have a seat, Atticus greeted him. With a nod, Ethan sat at the main seat. After sitting down, his gaze fell on Josephine, and he greeted her, Good evening, Miss Jacobson. Good evening, Mr. Quarles. Josephine also smiled. It's great that he has become my boss now. Mr. 
Quarles, let me introduce you to the management team of our station, Attica said, introducing each person one by one and finally introducing Katrina. This is our company's senior secretary, Katrina Sullivan. Nice to meet you, Mr. Quarles, Katrina greeted him with her most charming smile. Ethan just nodded in acknowledgement, and then it was time to order. Unexpectedly, Atticus handed the task of ordering to Josephine. Josephine, you order. Hearing that, she reluctantly took over the menu, but she really didn't know what to order. She had no idea about anyone's taste at the table, so she asked Ethan, do you have any particular dishes in mind, Mr. Quarles? With a smile, Ethan replied, you can order whatever you like, Miss Jacobson. I'm fine with anything. This sentence gave her a lot of freedom, allowing her to order whatever she wanted. In other words, he had no objections, so no one else was allowed to have objections. At this moment, her face started blushing and burning a little. Looking at the menu, she just ordered the expensive dishes. After all, Atticus would be paying for it. Meanwhile, Katrina felt that something was not quite right. It seems like Josephine knew Mr. Quarles before this. They look like old friends from the way they look at each other. However, Katrina had to remember one thing Peter's status. Hence, it was expected that he would be acquainted with Ethan. Does that mean Ethan likes Josephine? As Katrina thought about it, her hatred for Josephine grew. After Josephine had ordered the food, the director ordered some wine, while Atticus was in charge to liven up the mood. As Atticus was telling Ethan about how the project would progress, Ethan was zoning out. He looked like he was not interested in any of the projects Atticus mentioned. Josephine was sitting beside him and noticed his mood. It seems like Mr. Kowalski is talking to himself. As she thought about it, she changed her sitting position. Then, she noticed that she had sat on her dress. Just as she stretched her legs, she felt that she had kicked something. At that moment, her mind went blank when she realized it didn't feel like the table's legs. What did I just kick? In that split second, Ethan looked at her with a thoughtful expression. When Josephine met his gaze, her face turned red since she realized she had accidentally kicked his legs. Josephine bit her lips and smiled awkwardly at him. On the other hand, Ethan raised his wine glass and winked at her, indicating that it was fine. Everyone saw their sweet interaction and knew Ethan was uninterested in hearing the proposal. Instead, he had his eyes on Josephine. Katrina also saw their interactions. She clenched her fists under the table and thought, as expected, she is trying to seduce Ethan. Hurry up and give a toast to Mr. Quarles, Josephine, said the director. A toast to you, Mr. Quarles. Josephine raised her glass toward Ethan. Ethan also raised his glass and bumped it against hers. Just as Josephine was about to take a small sip, the vice director, Damien Posh, quickly said, that's not right, Josephine. You can't just take a small sip when Mr. Quarles has such a high status. Does that mean I have to drink it all? I'm not a heavy drinker, though, thought Josephine. Then, she looked at Ethan. I'm sure he will get me out of this mess. However, Ethan didn't say anything and was waiting for her to do as Damien said. She could tell that he was in for a show. Although Josephine felt helpless, she still smiled and said, well then, I guess I have to do it. Then, she drank the alcohol in one shot. Fortunately, the alcohol didn't taste bad, or else she would have thrown up. What is wrong with him? I thought we were good friends, yet he didn't help me. Fine then. I guess I thought too highly of our relationship, she thought grumpily. When the food arrived, Josephine started to imitate how people at social intercourse would do. She was telling Ethan to eat while getting up and pouring him some alcohol, seemingly as if she was trying to get him drunk. She sure knows how to bear a grudge. Ethan smiled inwardly. On the other hand, Katrina could only watch as Josephine entertained Ethan while she sat in the dark corner. Since it was a rectangular table, she couldn't do anything but just sit there. Josephine didn't eat much, but she had had three glasses of wine. At that moment, she was upset. After all, Ethan didn't care for her. I might as well just drink to my death, she thought. Just as she was going to have the fourth glass, Ethan finally made a move. He reached out and stopped her. That's enough. You have too much alcohol tonight, he said. 
Josephine was slightly drunk, hence, she was bolder. When she heard his words, she smiled. The lights made her look like a goddess with that beautiful smile of hers. This won't do, Mr. Quarles. After all, you are my boss, so I have to satisfy you. Here's another toast to you. As she spoke, she raised her glass toward him. On the other hand, Atticus was dumbfounded by her actions. It seems like Josephine is drunk. It would be bad if she offended Mr. Quarles with her slurs. Thinking about it, he stood up and said to Katrina, Cat, come here and help Josephine to the car. It seems that she is drunk. I'm not drunk, Mr. Kowalski. I'm still clear in my head, replied Josephine. She didn't think she was drunk. Other than feeling wobbly, she felt amazing. When Katrina heard Atticus' words, she stood up unwillingly. However, as soon as she realized she could take Josephine's place and sit beside Ethan, she was happy again. Thus, she walked toward Josephine and said, Let's get some rest, Josephine. Come on. However, Josephine knew what Katrina had in mind. She curved her lips and wiggled her index finger toward Katrina. I'm not going, Katrina. I want to stay here and accompany Mr. Quarles. Ethan's eyes widened when he heard her words. I never expected her to be so clingy, he thought. You're drunk, Josephine. I think it's best if you get some rest. Katrina said while secretly gritting her teeth. Josephine must have wanted to seduce Mr. Quarles while drunk. I won't let this happen. Josephine was persistent and sat on her spot. I'm not drunk. I still haven't eaten yet, and I'm hungry. No one is going to make me leave. Atticus didn't expect Josephine would act in such a way when she was drunk. If we don't get her out of here any sooner, she will make a fool of herself, he thought. Suddenly, Ethan couldn't help but chuckle. Then, he looked at Katrina and said, I'll take her to rest. Katrina was shocked and quickly waved him off. There's no need for that, Mr. Quarles. I'll take her away immediately. Then, she used all her might to pull Josephine upwards. When Josephine was dragged away from her seat, an arm wrapped around her gently, pushing Katrina away. I'll send her home. Enjoy your meal, said Ethan. Without waiting for the others to respond, he took Josephine out of the room. However, Josephine was going against him. Let go of me, Ethan. I'm not leaving with you. The others were frightened and thought, Josephine is too hot-tempered. How can she be so impudent when he is our boss? Listen to Mr. Quarles, Josephine. Atticus quickly reminded her. However, he could still hear her struggling. Let go of me, Ethan. Behave now. Ethan cooed at her. When the others heard this, they breathed a sigh of relief, knowing that Ethan wouldn't be mad no matter how Josephine acted. After some time, they could vaguely hear Josephine's voice again. I'm not going to listen to you. Katrina was seeing red. She sat on Josephine's seat, thinking, Josephine is so disrespectful to him, on second thought, I'm going to let her be. It's best if Ethan has had enough of her petty behavior. On the other hand, Josephine was being dragged into Ethan's car. As she sat on the passenger seat, her mind was dizzy, and she felt lightheaded. I'm dizzy, Ethan, she slurred. Do you want to go home? Or should I take you somewhere else to sober up? As Ethan spoke, he leaned toward her and stared at her. Do you have a place to let me sober up? I can't go home like this. My mom will scold me. Josephine remembered her mother getting upset when she got home drunk the last time. After all, she came from a strict family. Thus, it was a no-no to get drunk. Come with me then, replied Ethan as he started his car. After ten minutes, they arrived at a hotel's underground parking lot where Ethan stayed in. During the ride, Josephine's eyes were half-closed. When she opened them, she didn't know where they were. Where are we? She asked. Ethan opened the car door for her and said, Come on. Josephine trusted him very much and obliged. However, as soon as her feet touched the ground, her knees weakened, and she quickly hugged Ethan. In that split second, Ethan's arms wrapped around her waist, and he looked at her. When Josephine raised her head, their faces were just inches apart. At that moment, Josephine felt her heart skip a beat. How is he so charming? Does he have to be this good-looking? Can you walk? Ethan asked her with a low voice. Josephine smiled sweetly and said, Why? Are you going to carry me up the stairs? 
As soon as her words fell, Ethan took the initiative and carried her bridal style. Josephine yelped in shock and quickly wrapped her arms around him, afraid she would fall. Her face was flushed red as Ethan carried her. It looks like I can't tease him anymore. He looks like he'll give in easily, she thought. She didn't think it would be fun if she had him wrapped around her fingers that easily. Inside the elevator, Josephine was so embarrassed that she kept her head down. When she smelled the fragrance from him, she couldn't help but take a whiff. He smells nice, she thought. Ethan could see her getting closer to him from the mirror's reflection. What is she doing? Is she smelling me? She acts like a puppy. Finally, the elevator's sound rang. Ethan directly took her to his room. When Ethan put her down, she asked, Is this your room? Yes. You can stay here. I'll take you home later, replied Ethan. Then, he pressed the button that connected to the 180-degree curtains. As the beautiful night scenery unfolded before Josephine's eyes, she couldn't help but be amazed. Her eyes widened. This is so beautiful. Ethan poured a glass of water and gave it to her. Here. Have some water. Josephine took the water and sat on the couch that was by the balcony. Although she had drunk it, her face was still burning hot. As she put down the glass, she could feel the effect of the wine. Feeling hot, she couldn't help but tug on her shirt, and her dress curled up to her knees. When Ethan walked back into the room, he gulped when he saw her in such an alluring state. He couldn't tell if she had done it on purpose since she had an innocent look on her face. On the other hand, Josephine leaned her head against the couch. When she raised her head and saw Ethan, she smiled. Her smile was beautiful, seemingly like a rose, which is sweet and luscious. Ethan quickly drank the water he was holding to suppress his desires. Then, he took the initiative to question her as he sat in front of her. What's the matter with you today? You drank so much alcohol when you know you aren't a heavy drinker. Why don't you take a guess? Josephine tilted her head and looked at him. Are you unhappy? Say, are we friends, Mr. Quarles? Of course we are. Ethan cocked his eyebrow. If you are my friend, don't ask this question, replied Josephine as she propped her chin. Ethan was startled by her words and thought, she sure is hard to guess, but it's fun. At this moment, Josephine's phone rang. When she picked it up and saw the caller's ID, she mumbled, Luke. Why is he calling me? At that moment, Ethan was unhappy. Don't answer it. It was too late. Josephine had already answered the call. Hello. Is something the matter, Luke? Will you go to work tomorrow, Josephine? Yeah, all right. I have a surprise gift for you tomorrow. I won't keep it, so don't send me any gift. I made it just for you. Please take it for my sake. I, before Josephine could say anything, Luke hung up the call. Josephine was speechless as she put her phone aside and rubbed her temple. I'm dizzy. Can I lie down for a moment? Go ahead, Ethan replied. As Josephine lay on the bed, she didn't notice that the collar of her shirt had slipped. From Ethan's view, he could see the inside of her clothes. Initially, he was embarrassed and averted his gaze. However, something seemed to lure him in, and he couldn't help but stare at her. After some time, Josephine had fallen asleep. It seemed like her default mode when being drunk was sleep mode. Josephine, Ethan called her softly. Chapter 2111. However, Josephine didn't seem to react. Ethan grabbed a blanket and draped it across her. As he knelt on the carpet and looked at her beautiful face, he would be lying if he said he had nothing on his mind. Any man would want to take advantage of Josephine's vulnerability, and Ethan was no exception. Looking at her, he thought, I'm sure she won't notice if I secretly kiss her. Then, he decided to take action. Just as Ethan leaned down and was just inches away from Josephine's face, he saw her open her eyes and look at him. What are you doing? She asked. Josephine was a light sleeper. When Ethan draped the blanket on her, she was waking up. When she opened her eyes, she saw that Ethan's face was close to her. I, Ethan had never felt so embarrassed in his life. However, Josephine knew what he was trying to do. At that moment, she blinked her eyes and asked, Are you trying to kiss me? Can I? Ethan squinted his eyes and asked, 
Looking at his handsome face, Josephine replied without hesitation, Well, it will be a waste if I let go of this opportunity. When Ethan heard her words, he was stunned. Before he could react, Josephine wrapped her arms around him and kissed him first. Her action startled Ethan since he had never expected her to be so bold. Meanwhile, Josephine had been dying to kiss him since they kissed on the cruise ship. From that day onward, she had been reminiscing about the kiss. Truthfully, she knew what she was getting into when she entered his room. She wasn't an innocent girl anymore. After all, she had never allowed Luke to hold her hands, even when he had courted her for over a year. Yet, she allowed Ethan to be alone with her because she also had feelings for him. As the saying went, hunters often appear as prey. Josephine was the representative of this quote. As the duo kissed inseparably on the couch, Ethan grabbed the back of her head and deepened the kiss. Suddenly, Josephine's phone rang. After the call had died down, it rang again, seemingly as if the caller was persistent in getting Josephine to answer. Ethan pulled apart from Josephine and panted. Then, he leaned his forehead against her and asked, We can continue after you answer the call. Josephine was also panting. Never had she expected that a kiss would make her breathless. When she looked at the caller ID, her mind went clear instantly. Then, she looked at the time and saw that it was 9.30 p.m. Oh my, what a pity that it is already this late. As she thought about it, she took a deep breath and redialed the number. Hey, mom, I'm heading home right now, she said casually. You have to be home by 10 p.m. You're making me worry. There was just news about a woman getting murdered late at night, said Heidi. All right, mom, I'm safe. I'm coming back, Josephine promised. After that, she hung up the phone and looked at Ethan, who was reluctant. I have to head home. Then, she was going to get up. However, Ethan pulled her into his embrace without hesitation and kissed her again. Give me a few more minutes, he said in a raspy tone. Hearing his words, Josephine could feel her heart beating rapidly. She had to admit that Ethan looked goddamn sexy when he was being dominant. The second kiss was bringing out their lust. Josephine was suppressing herself, and she knew that Ethan was the same. Hence, she wanted to end this kiss as soon as possible. Let's just stop for today, she said. Ethan chuckled and asked, do I need to make an appointment for the next time we kiss? Hearing his words, Josephine couldn't help but laugh. Why does he take kissing like a date? I'll think about it. Anyway, I need to head home now. I'll drive you. Ethan tugged on his tie and slightly raised his jawline. His sexy posture made Josephine's eyes widen. Noticing her gaze, he asked her deeply, Are you lusting over me, Miss Jacobson? In the split second, Josephine's face was flushed red. She realized that she couldn't hide her emotions in front of him. Chapter 2112 After the duo had left the room and entered the elevator, Josephine felt Ethan hold her hand casually. She didn't take her hand out. Now that she had sobered up, she was in disbelief and dared not to look at him. After they got into the car, Ethan turned on some music for her to relax. As Josephine looked at the lively night street, she felt something different. It felt like, they were in love. After some time, Ethan arrived at Josephine's home. Just as Josephine was about to exit the car, Ethan suddenly leaned toward her and held her hand. Are you in need of a boyfriend, Miss Jacobson? Josephine was shocked. At that moment, she recalled their kiss just now and thought, is he taking advantage of the kiss to court me? Thinking about it, she quickly said, I'm still dizzy from the alcohol, Mr. Quarles. Can we talk about this tomorrow? Ethan knew what she was planning. Is this a hit and run, Miss Jacobson? Josephine was embarrassed. After all, he seemed to be implying that she was a playgirl. She wasn't, though. She was unprepared as she had never expected such a thing to happen tonight. I'm dizzy, Mr. Quarles. I need to get home now. Goodbye, and drive safe. As Josephine spoke, she quickly exited the car and closed the door. Then, she hurried into her house and stood by the bushes, looking at the car from the gaps as it slowly drove away. She sighed and rubbed her lips. God, it must have been swollen, she thought. When she entered the living room, she quickly said to Heidi, who was watching the television, I'm exhausted, mom. I'm going to go upstairs. 
You should have come home sooner if you are exhausted, replied Heidi. However, she didn't ask anything more and continued watching the TV. After Josephine entered her room, she quickly rushed to the bathroom. Looking at the mirror, she saw that her face was flushed, and her lips were rosy red even though she had no lipstick on. It was obvious that it was because of the kiss. This is so embarrassing. Josephine buried her face in her hands. Ethan would be her boss, and they would encounter each other in the company. Yet, she did such intimate things with him. Josephine was indeed exhausted. After taking a bath, she went to sleep and had a dreamless night. The following day, she went to the company as usual. However, before stepping into the building, she heard someone call out to her. It's me, Joey. Josephine turned around and saw Luke waving at her by the entrance. There was also a cardboard box by his side, seemingly to have something expensive inside. Come over here and open it, Joey. You'll be surprised, said Luke. What is it? asked Josephine. You'll know once you open it. I'm going to take a call. Hurry up and open it. Josephine felt speechless when she saw that Luke had told his assistant to record the moment of her being touched by his gift. Not now. I need to clock in, she said to him. No, no, no. Just open it, Josephine. I put so much effort into this. Luke pleaded. He reached out and stopped her from entering the company. Josephine had seen how clingy he would get. If she refused to open this present, she knew he would bring it to her office and ask her to open it. Thus, she decided to open the gift immediately to stop him from disturbing her colleagues. You'll let me go to work as long as I open it, right? She asked. Yes, as long as you open it, I will not disturb you, Luke said confidently. After thinking momentarily, Josephine walked toward the purple box while Luke stood aside and made a phone call. Josephine crouched and untied the ribbon. When she opened the box, she saw that it was filled with balloons. Moreover, they seemed to be helium balloons. After she had opened the box, she allowed the balloons to fly toward the sky. Beside her, the assistant quickly shouted, Miss Jacobson, grab the balloon, grab it. Chapter 2113 Josephine was stunned, wondering how she was going to catch the balloons. They're already about two meters above my head. At that moment, Luke turned around as soon as he finished his phone call. Upon taking a quick stride, he charged at one of the balloons with lightning speed in an attempt to grab it, only to fail in embarrassment due to his short height. Nonetheless, he still did his best attempts to grab the balloon with his assistant, unknowingly presenting a hilarious and amusing sight. On the other hand, Josephine was still dumbfounded by that sight until she saw a truck parked in a hidden spot. On the truck, there was a sports car that contained many colorful balloons. In that instant, something seemed to dawn on her as she looked up. To her surprise, there was a set of keys dangling, on the balloon that was floating in the air. Luke, who did everything he could but still failed to retrieve the balloon, came complaining to Josephine with a bitter look on his face. I thought you would get the balloons. Do you know what's on them? Josephine gulped and rhetorically asked, your car keys, I guess. Yup, both sets of them. Luke smiled awkwardly in response. I'm sorry. Josephine apologized. No worries. I can always duplicate a new set. It's not a big deal. Luke said and stuck out his fingers. This car is a gift for you. Do you like it? I specially bought a pink one for you. Josephine was speechless in response to Luke's words. A sports car. What is he thinking? She shook her head and waved her hand. No need for that, Luke. I'm happy with our friendship, so let's just keep it that way. Give this car to someone else who deserves you, perhaps. Anyway, my work starts soon, so I need to get going. Josephine ran through the entrance of her company like she was a refugee who was escaping from her captor. Nonetheless, their interaction was secretly recorded by the paparazzi and was later made the headline with a title that read, The Love That Flew Away With The Balloons. While there was a paragraph that detailed the story of the incident, it was accompanied by two pictures in which Luke and his assistant were seen trying hard to retrieve the balloons hilariously. In the meantime, Josephine had been suffering from a headache so severe that she couldn't focus on her work at all since the morning, although she expected the after-effects of her hangover. Are you all right, Joey? Ren asked in a concerned manner. 
My head hurts. Oh, come on, is your age catching up to you? You're not that old as far as I remember. No, it's not that. I'm having a hangover. Who's the client you were busy entertaining? Ren asked curiously. Josephine shook her head. Nah, it wasn't a client but our big boss. Uh, so, you were entertaining our company's director. Ren was surprised. Josephine shook her head and replied, Our boss is someone else now. The director is no longer the biggest shareholder in our company. Who's the biggest shareholder of our company then? Ren pressed on with her question. You'll find out soon enough, so I'm not going to ruin the surprise. Josephine smiled at her. However, they suddenly heard high heels creaking on the floor from a distance as Ren curled up and stepped away timidly. When Josephine turned around, she was met with an angry look on Katrina's face. Step outside with me, Josephine. I want to have a word with you. I'm busy now. Josephine grabbed the files on the table. Aren't you afraid I'd go loud about what happened last night? Katrina threatened Josephine. Then, she bent over and leaned closer to Katrina's ear. I'm going to tell everyone in our company about the intimacy you had with Mr. Quarles. Hey, watch your mouth, man. Josephine blushed in her cheeks while trying to keep herself calm. What's wrong? Are you scared? Let's have a word about it then. Katrina stood up with an unhappy look on her face. She then walked out the door with Josephine following right behind her until they found themselves in a corner with no one else. With her eyes glued to Josephine's face, Katrina grew more and more annoyed the longer she glared at her. Now, tell me about you and Mr. Quarles. She demanded an answer from Josephine. Josephine knitted her eyebrows. Why should I tell you? You two seemed to have known each other a long time ago, huh? Did you get to know him through your grandpa? Katrina was eager to find out the truth. My grandpa has nothing to do with it. Don't drag my family into this. Josephine responded angrily, warning Katrina not to involve her family in their discussion. Chapter 2114 if it wasn't your grandpa, how did you get to know a tycoon like Ethan? It's not like you have a wide network connection. Katrina couldn't believe her ears. In fact, she just confirmed with her brother-in-law that Ethan was not an ordinary tycoon. After all, his family owned a logistics company that was ranked first in the country, which was what made him stand out among the rich. At the thought of Ethan's presence, Katrina was especially agitated because she was expecting to change her life for the better by sponging off him. Even if she couldn't be his wife in the end, she was hoping to secure a huge sum of money that would keep her fed for the rest of her life for herself should the both of them break up. You're right. We know each other indeed. So, what are you going to do about it? Josephine responded impatiently, feeling more and more annoyed with Katrina. Where did you both go last night? Did you two spend the night at the hotel? Your innocent look may fool the others, Josephine, but I know what you're up to. You used your dirty tricks to make Ethan get laid with you. Josephine was a terrible liar. Thus, when she heard Katrina's words, her face and ears blushed in embarrassment, not to mention her reluctance in answering her question. Nevertheless, Katrina was observant enough to notice her blushed cheeks, which confirmed her suspicion. Let me guess. So, you both really spent the night in the hotel, didn't you? No, we didn't. He took me home instead, Josephine replied while looking up. Stop lying. You were so drunk that you lay on the table like a dead person. It's hard not to think that you were luring Ethan into taking the opportunity. Katrina could still remember what she saw the night before. Can I go back to my desk now? Josephine intentionally raised her wrist and looked at her watch. Wait a minute, Josephine. I don't care how you got to know Ethan, but from now on, I'm going to compete with you in a fair and square manner because I have feelings for him too. Katrina made her point understood as she flicked her hair to flaunt her elegance. I believe I'm a match for you in every aspect. Katrina was confident in herself due to her good looks, as well as her wealthy upbringing. Furthermore, the fact that her brother-in-law was the director of her company only added to her confidence. Josephine gulped nervously, feeling a stab of pain in her chest when she heard Katrina's words. For some reason, she had a strange feeling that Ethan was not a man who could resist temptation, recalling how he was turned on by her kiss almost right away when she pecked his lips the night before. 
Because of that, she was sure a man like Ethan would surely succumb to temptations. I'm not that good looking, but if Ethan had eyes for me, he would definitely fall for a sexy woman like Katrina. Annoyed by the thought of that, Josephine regretted sharing an intimate moment with Ethan the night before because she couldn't accept an unfaithful man as her soulmate. When Katrina didn't get a response from Josephine, she grunted angrily and walked off shortly after. Then, Josephine returned to her desk, but as she was about to take a sip of water, Ren suddenly leaned closer and asked, Joey, are these pictures of you and Luke? Josephine was shocked when she heard that, whereupon she immediately shifted her gaze to the phone screen to take a closer look at the pictures. Wait, what? The balloon confession is now on the headline! Exclamation mark. Although her face and Luke's were blurred, she still couldn't help but feel a little pissed off. After that, she rose from her seat and made her way from the Department of Multimedia and Communication, to another. As soon as she entered the workplace, she instantly became the center of attention with everyone fixing their envious gazes on her. Who posted the news this morning? Why wasn't I asked for my permission before it was posted? Easy, Josephine. We censored your faces, didn't we? Furthermore, we didn't mention your name either. We just said the woman is a reporter. One of the female colleagues added, this news is getting more than a million views, so would you please stop complaining over something so trivial, Josephine. Josephine was speechless because she didn't expect herself to go viral one day. Hope Luke will be fine with getting on the news. As soon as she returned to her seat, her phone rang, whereupon she checked it out and saw Luke's name on the screen. Hey, Luke. Chapter 2115 Joey, what are your colleagues in the multimedia department doing? Am I a joke to them? Luke sounded angry. Relax, Luke. Take it easy, would you? I'm so mad right now unless you treat me to a meal. Otherwise, I'm going to make a scene in your office. Luke took advantage of the incident to make Josephine treat him to a meal. Josephine was embarrassed at the thought of Luke's car keys that she was responsible for losing earlier that day. All right, but I'm a little busy in the afternoon. So, maybe tonight. Great. See you tonight, Luke said happily in the meantime, Ethan was in the hotel room while browsing through the internet with his iPad. Then, he stumbled upon the news that got him curious and tapped into it. The next thing that came into view was the familiar building of the Department of Multimedia and Communication along with two blurred faces of a man and a woman. With a pair of furrowed eyebrows on his face, Ethan could tell that the lady was Josephine without even seeing her face. At the same time, he also figured out that the man who wanted to give Josephine a car was Luke with ease. Not long after that, he reached for his cell phone and gave Josephine a call. Who is it now? When Josephine grabbed her phone and checked it out, she saw a name that made her heartbeat race like a jackhammer. Damn it! Is he still trying to hold me responsible for that kiss or something? Josephine quickly hid in a corner and answered in a hushed voice, Hey, Mr. Quarles. Did Luke give you a sports car as a gift this morning? The man asked. Josephine's face blushed in embarrassment because she didn't expect Ethan to learn about the news. She asked, How did you know that? I saw it on our company's website. Wait, you could recognize me even though my face was pixelated. Josephine was in disbelief. Are you thinking of getting a new car? The question came all of a sudden. Nope, I'm not. My car still works fine, Josephine answered. Just then, her team leader beckoned her over for a meeting, so she said, I have to go, Mr. Quarles. My team leader needs me to be in a meeting. See you. She hung up the call and met up with her team leader for the meeting. Meanwhile, Ethan, who was in the hotel, summoned his assistant and said, get me a feminine-looking sports car. I'm giving it to someone as a gift. Yes, Mr. Quarles. Ethan squinted, thinking he should satisfy Josephine's material needs to prove his financial capability. Meanwhile, Josephine was in the meeting room where murmurs of gossip were ongoing. Everyone envied Josephine because she would own a sports car as soon as she accepted Luke's gift. But to their surprise and bewilderment, she rejected him and turned down an expensive sports car as a gift. Everyone thought, come on, what's Josephine thinking? She has no intention of accepting Luke as her boyfriend, does she? Soon, Ethan exited. 
the hotel and made his way to Tribus TV. As the biggest shareholder of the company, he was given a spacious office with a good view, but to him, his job felt more like a vacation than work. As soon as he arrived, he received an Excel file on his phone and carefully skimmed through a name list within it. Then, he found Josephine's name and contact, whereupon he started calling her number. On the other hand, Josephine heard her phone, ringing not long after her meeting ended. Hello, this is Josephine speaking from the Department of Multimedia and Communication. How may I help you? Come to my office, Ethan spoke in a deep voice. Mr. Quarles. Josephine widened her eyes in disbelief. Yes, speaking. Now, meet me on the 18th floor, Ethan demanded. You're working here, already. Josephine didn't expect Ethan would personally visit the company. Just come up here. Ethan hung up the call as soon as he finished his sentence. Josephine rose from her seat and made her way to the elevator clandestinely, as if she was a thief. Upon looking at her surroundings to make sure she was alone, she pushed the button and headed to the 18th floor on which the management office was. When she got there, she had no idea where to go until she heard footsteps from the corner and she saw Ethan's attractive figure. Right here, Ethan walked toward Josephine, who quickly scurried in his way. Seeing her hilarious reaction, the man chuckled in amusement. What's wrong? Why are you acting like a thief? Is there anything I can help you with? Josephine asked. Ethan brought Josephine into his office and closed the door behind him. Then, he sat on the couch sluggishly and said, Nothing, actually. I just want to see you. Chapter 2116 Josephine's beautiful face started heating up. I'm at work. I got you a sports car, Ethan brought up with his eyebrows raised. She immediately turned to him and froze for a few seconds. Is he okay? Why would he buy me a sports car as well? No, I can't accept it. You mustn't send it to me either. Josephine immediately rejected his present. But I placed the order and they'll send it over this afternoon. What am I supposed to do with the car if you don't take it? Ethan threw the question back to her. She blinked a few times upon hearing that. Eventually, she bit her lip and asked, Can you return it? Nope. You should have asked for my opinion before you bought the car. He's too impulsive. The car will be at the VIP parking space in the underground parking lot. You can drive it whenever you want. Being the high and mighty person he was, Ethan would not take back a present he had gifted someone. On the other hand, Josephine might have seen her fair share of domineering people in her life, but she had never met someone so unreasonably bossy. Just return it. My car works perfectly fine. I don't need a sports car, she muttered while continuing to chew on her lip. Ethan smiled and gracefully shrugged. It's fine. A sports car is just a normal gift to me. If you don't want it, just leave it there in the car park. Josephine felt herself getting flustered as she looked at his rows of pearly whites. He sure was a sight to behold when he smiled. Right then, her phone began to ring. When she saw that it was a call from Luke, she quickly went to the window and took the call. Hey, Luke, Joey, I booked a table at a restaurant for us tonight. I'll come to pick you up after work. Luke's voice rang out from the other end of the line. Got it, Josephine replied. She couldn't just bail on him when she was the one who agreed to treat him to a meal. However, there was one thing she decided to make clear to him tonight she and Luke could only be friends. She wanted him to stop wasting his time on her. However, after learning about the great lengths he went to pursue her this year, she was sure that he wouldn't give up just like that if she only rejected him verbally. That being said, there was a possibility he would if she let him know that she had given her heart away to someone she liked. After pondering over it, Josephine realized she only knew one man who was more outstanding, handsome, and wealthier than Luke which could make him give up. She then turned around to look at the man sitting on the couch before she walked over. Mr. Quarles, are you free tonight? She asked, to which he raised his eyebrows. Um hum. Can you help me with a little something, please? She begged. Shoot. Ethan was more than willing to help. I would like to have you pretend to be my boyfriend and reject Luke for me. Ethan was immediately in high spirits as a humorous glint appeared in his eyes. Sure thing. Josephine let out a sigh of relief when she saw how readily Ethan agreed to help. 
She only hoped that Luke would come to his senses tonight and stop wasting his life. I'll get back to work, Mr. Quarles. I'll contact you when I get off work tonight, Josephine stated. After all, she couldn't neglect her work when she was in front of the big boss. All right, then, off you go. Meanwhile, Ethan didn't want to get in the way of her work. When Josephine returned to her seat, there was a sudden commotion in the work group chat. Someone was sending some pictures taken in the underground parking lot. The pictures were of a red Ferrari sports car parked under the lights. Everyone was shocked by how costly the car was from the way the radiant paint on the car's surface reflected the light. My goodness, whose car is it? It's parked in the VIP parking space. That's so cool. It's probably worth millions. Whose is it? Does anyone in the group know which rich lady this car belongs to? Ren was also gossiping with everyone else. She then asked Josephine, who was beside her, Joey, do you know whose car is it? The group's gone crazy because of it. Josephine thought her brain was about to explode as she stared at the sports car on the screen of the iPad. It can't be the sports car Ethan gave me, can it? It's parked at the VIP spot, and it is brand new. Chapter 2117 I'm so envious. I wonder which big shot's gift it is. I'm guessing it is Tori's car. She has tons of suitors recently, and I heard that they are all wealthy businessmen. Tori Alford was one of the well-known female anchors in the company and she was unattached, on top of possessing both beauty and talent. At this moment, everyone was guessing that she was the owner of the car. And yet, the woman in question suddenly chimed in, it's not mine. Huh, whose is it then, if it's not Tori's? Ren immediately grew more interested in the gossip. Josephine's face felt warm. At this exact moment, an assistant came over and put a purse on her desk. Josephine, someone told me to give it to you. Josephine was taken aback. Since she couldn't tell what was inside the bag from the outside, she couldn't help but pick it up, only to be surprised by what she saw. It turned out to be a box with a Ferrari logo on it. After she opened the box in the bag, she saw two neatly placed car keys. Her breath proceeded to hitch. Ethan really gave me the car. She could feel a headache coming. What should I do now? The whole office is talking about this now. If she admitted it, everyone here would surely think that she was the sugar baby of some rich man. Just whose is it? Ren narrowed her eyes like a detective and wondered out loud. Seeing this, Josephine secretly put the bag under the table. She rested her head in her palms, feeling her mind a mess. There were only five minutes left before working hours ended. After she hurriedly took care of the documents on her desk, she decided to get off work. Right then, Katrina stormed over with a mountain of documents in her arms before she instructed directly, Josephine, you're not leaving work so soon. I need these documents to be ready before 8 p.m. Josephine was at a loss for words when she looked at the other woman. But it's after work hours now. Why didn't you bring them to me earlier? What? You got a problem with that, huh? It's your job. Anyway, these are the materials that will be needed tomorrow morning. You'll be held responsible if they're not done. Katrina intentionally kept these documents until now before bringing them to Josephine. She didn't want Josephine to have time to go out tonight. I have a dinner date with my friend. I can't work overtime today. Josephine countered. That's on you, so why are you telling me that? Go tell the team leader. After saying that, Katrina turned around smugly and left. Josephine bit her lip when she took a look at the four or five different sets of documents in front of her. Right then, Ren poked her head in Josephine's direction and commented, she's definitely targeting you. You two got beef. At that, Josephine grumbled to herself, the only reason Katrina is acting hostile toward me is probably because of Ethan. Josephine happened to receive a message from Luke. I booked us a table at a restaurant, Joey. I'm coming to pick you up at 5.30 p.m. You don't have to pick me up, she replied. I can get there myself. Just wait for me at the restaurant. That works. I'll be waiting at the restaurant, then. Came his eager reply. As Josephine looked at the documents, she turned to Ren. Ren, can I borrow a bag? I'm going to work overtime from home. Sure. Ren passed her one, but you have to send the documents back here tonight, or you won't make it in time for the morning broadcast. 
Josephine could only nod. Got it. I'll bring the documents here before 9 p.m. Since these were real-time news, the production and writing of news releases must be completed quickly without any delay. When her landline began to ring, she reached out and took the call. You've reached the reporter's office, she greeted. When are we leaving? Josephine felt all fuzzy in her chest when she heard the deep, magnetic male voice. Quickly cupping the phone receiver, she whispered, I, too see you in the underground parking lot in five. The man on the other end of the call asked with a chuckle, are we going there in your sports car? No, we will be using my car. Surely, you're not complaining, Mr. Quarles. Of course not. After she put the documents in the bag, Josephine tidied up the table and bid Ren goodbye. Without anyone noticing, she picked up the bag with the car keys and scurried off. Chapter 2118 At this moment, Katrina was so bored in the office that she dialed the director's office number. Hello, Atticus uttered after picking up the phone. Atticus, quick question, will Mr. Quarles come to work today? He is in the company today. What? He's here. Does he need an assistant? Well, he didn't request one. Which office is he at, then? The big office facing south. Atticus, are there any documents you need me to send over? Katrina quickly asked. I want to see him. It's about time he got off work. You won't see him even if you go up. We'll try our luck again tomorrow. I'll find you a reason to go up. Atticus was well aware that his sister-in-law was interested in Ethan, and he wanted her to succeed so he could have a rich and powerful brother-in-law. Katrina soon hung up the phone. However, there was no way she would give up. Immediately, she grabbed her bag and went up to the 18th floor. Her heart skipped a beat as soon as the elevator opened, the tall and handsome man she wanted to see was lazily standing outside as he waited for the elevator. Mr. Quarles, are you, getting off work? She asked while blushing furiously. Right. Ethan nodded and strode into the elevator before asking in return, are you not getting off the elevator, Miss Sullivan? I I suddenly remembered that I don't need to anymore. I'm done for the day. After she said that, she shamelessly refused to get off the elevator. She even wanted to go to the underground parking lot when she saw Ethan press the number for the said floor. Ethan's message alert tone rang then, prompting him to lower his head and take a glance at his phone. It was a message from Josephine. I'll be waiting in front of the elevator. Gotcha. The corners of his mouth lifted into a small smile. Katrina happened to see his smile through the mirror in the elevator, and her heart started to gallop. Whose message is it that's got him smiling so dotingly? At this point, the elevator had stopped on several floors, and many employees had squeezed their way into the elevator. They couldn't help their accelerating heartbeats as well when they saw Ethan, but everyone was rushing to get off work that they didn't mind cramming into the elevator. When an idea suddenly came to Katrina, she immediately took the chance while the employees were pushing their way in to lean into Ethan's arms. She continued to shuffle closer until she was almost pressing against his torso. Ethan tensed up, feeling rather resigned. He had never expected he would be squashed into a patty after all the other days of him enjoying his exclusive private elevator. Josephine was aware that it was rush hour when everyone was getting off work so she deliberately hid behind a pillar to wait for Ethan. Right then, she saw the number on the elevator floor indicator decrease until it got to the underground parking lot. Ethan must be in the elevator. She was immediately greeted by the sight of the elevator crowded with employees when the door opened. As she began to think that Ethan might not be on this elevator after all, she saw Katrina nearly sticking to Ethan immediately, after the employees in front left the elevator. Ah. A woman shouted. Katrina had purposely lightly bumped into another employee and stumbled out of the elevator. She reacted by quickly hugging Ethan's arm with both her arms and sticking her sensual bosom to his body. Josephine, who happened to watch the entire process, thought that Katrina was one hell of an eyesore. She will do anything to get Ethan's attention. Not only did Katrina stubbornly insist on being in the same elevator, she even deliberately pushed herself against Ethan's chest when it was more crowded. And even though no one bumped up against her, she put on a whole show by herself and put on a pitiful, helpless act. Fortunately, Ethan, being the gentleman he was, reached out and helped her find her footing before he swiftly detached himself from her. 
Katrina immediately blushed and purred flirtatiously, thank you, Mr. Quarles. As soon as they got out of the elevator, she continued to ask like a schemer, Mr. Quarles, will you kindly give me a ride? She was sure he had driven here. She wanted to sit in his car. But before Ethan could answer, Josephine smilingly stepped out from behind the pillar. I'm here, Mr. Quarles. When Ethan saw her, he turned to Katrina and stated, I apologize, but Miss Jacobson and I have a prior engagement. Katrina's face instantly turned rigid when she heard that. What? Was the loving smile he had on in the elevator because he received a message from Josephine? Are they going on a date tonight? We're off then, Katrina. Josephine. Would it be convenient for you to give me a ride? Katrina wasn't going to let go of any chances to get closer to Ethan. At that point, she thought that it wouldn't make much a difference if she was riding in Josephine's car instead of Ethan's. Chapter 2119 It's inconvenient for me. Josephine firmly rejected her. Katrina immediately put aside her pride and begged, Please just give me a ride, Josephine. However, Josephine couldn't be bothered as she announced, you should take a cab. After she said that, she went to her car, which happened to be right next to her. Opposite her car was a row of VIP parking spaces, where the red sports car stayed there under the dazzling lights like a noble princess. Katrina was so angry she quietly stomped her foot and cursed at Josephine. Josephine sat in the driver's seat while Ethan adjusted the passenger seat. He had to adjust the seat's position because of his mile-long legs. The man, standing a frame of six feet three, looked like he was struggling to worm his way into this mini BMW. Josephine then pressed the ignition switch, only to hear the engine letting out sounds of protest. The car simply wouldn't start. What the hell? She was utterly confused. The car was working just fine this morning, but now the engine wouldn't even start. Oh dear car of mine, please don't embarrass me, she thought to herself. Am I running out of luck in front of a hottie? This is so humiliating. Not wanting to give up, she kept pressing it a few more times. However, the car engine seemed to be intentionally provoking her as it made a few muffled noises despite staying dead. Ethan bit back his laughter and turned to ask her, is something wrong? No idea. It was fine when I drove here this morning, but I can't get it to start now. Josephine started getting anxious. She didn't know a thing about car repairs, as her father was always the one who did her car maintenance for her. Did the engine break down because it's been some time since it was sent for maintenance? She muttered. Seeing this, the man pointed at the red Porsche across them and suggested, let's use that car instead. Her mind went blank for a few seconds, but she eventually panicked as she stared at the sports car. But I've never driven a sports car. I'll teach you. Ethan opened the door and got out of the car after throwing that out. Josephine refused to give up and pressed the ignition button two more times, but it still wouldn't start. She couldn't help feeling frustrated at the thought that this situation was forcing her into switching cars. She received a call from Luke, to which she stayed in the car and answered. Hey, Luke. Joey, I'm at the restaurant already. I'll be waiting. Okay, I'm heading over now, she answered. It seemed like she had no choice but to go to the restaurant in the car Ethan gave her. And so, she reluctantly got out of the car with her purse and bag of documents before she handed the bag containing the car keys to Ethan. To her surprise, Ethan opened the driver's door and gestured at her to enter. Seeing this left her stunned. Is he not driving? You'll be driving, he mentioned in a low voice. I, I really don't know how to. Josephine wasn't being modest, she truly didn't dare to drive a sports car. You'll know how after I show you the ropes. He smilingly went to open the door to the passenger's seat and got in. Feeling somewhat awkward, Josephine nervously scrambled to the driver's seat. Ethan then leaned over to teach her. As Josephine was used to driving, she understood him immediately. She eventually turned her head and asked, aren't you afraid of riding in a car driven by a female driver like me, Mr. Quarles? He stifled a laugh and rasped, I trust you. Upon hearing that, she started the car. Katrina was waiting next to the elevator for her colleague to see her home when she heard the low-pitched roar of a sports car coming from the direction of the VIP parking spot next to her. It was a rich and powerful sound that no one could resist. 
She hurriedly took a few steps forward, only to see through the lowered car window that Josephine was in the driver's seat while Ethan was sitting next to her. Katrina was stupefied to see that. What is going on? The sports car that the group was talking about was Josephine's. Did Ethan give it to her? At that point, Katrina could go crazy from the jealousy that filled her. On the other end, Josephine slowly drove the car out of its parking spot. The shiny car demanded attention, whereas Josephine, clad in uniform, looked indescribably elegant and beautiful in it. Katrina kept staring at Josephine driving the sports car with Ethan beside her. Suddenly, her fists were balled up in jealousy. Chapter 2120 Katrina felt that she had thoroughly lost at this moment. Although she and Josephine had been at odds since she came to the TV station and they didn't like each other, Katrina now felt her dislike for Josephine instantly increase by no less than tenfold. This was disrupting her whole life. An employee who happened to see Josephine too exclaimed, turns out it is Josephine's sports car. After she said that, she immediately informed the group chat, where a commotion promptly broke out. Everyone was envious of how lucky Josephine was to receive a white sports car in the morning and a red one in the evening. When Josephine reached the first traffic light, she stepped on the brakes so hard her forehead hit the steering wheel. Even the man beside her was thrown forward for a moment. Sorry, so sorry. She let out an embarrassed smile while covering her aching forehead. She had stepped on the brakes too hard because she wasn't aware of how sensitive the car was. Does it hurt? Ethan caringly looked over, only to see a red mark on her fair forehead. I'm okay. Josephine quickly shook her head to show that she was fine. After that, she got comfortable with driving the car all the way to the entrance of the restaurant. Many of the customers looked at the car from the corners of their eyes when Josephine parked in the parking lot. When the man in the passenger seat got out, the women realized that it was the lady in the passenger seat, not the car, that they should be feeling envious of. Josephine couldn't help but take a deep breath. Before she asked, will you be okay with pretending to be my boyfriend? Who said anything about pretending? Ethan smiled when he heard that. I am your boyfriend from now on. Josephine was taken aback. Is he trying to make our deceit real? But before she could react, the man had already held her hand with his big palm as they headed toward the restaurant. At the same time, Luke was sitting on a couch in a private room. He occasionally glanced at the bouquet of red roses he had prepared while he imagined how Josephine would look when he gave her the bouquet later. Not only that, he had gotten new car keys for her. He was determined to give her the sports car. When he heard knocks come from outside the door, he quickly took the bouquet and walked over. However, what greeted him when he opened? The door was Josephine standing there with another man holding her hand. Luke was dumbfounded. What's Quarles doing here again? Joey, why did you bring him here? Luke asked, displeased. Josephine came in while holding Ethan's hand and solemnly uttered, Luke, let me introduce you to Ethan. He is my boyfriend. The bouquet in Luke's hands immediately fell to the floor. He couldn't believe that Josephine and Ethan were together. W when did you get together? Luke had a disapproving expression on his face. Joey, I like you a lot. I will treat you well for the rest of my life as long as you choose to be with me. Luke, we can be friends. Please choose another woman after we have this dinner together. Josephine advised. However, Luke stubbornly insisted, no. You're the only one I love. I will never fall for another person. Ethan's sleek eyebrows arched as he possessively embraced Josephine with his long arms and announced domineeringly, she is mine. Josephine's body went stiff in an instant. She could feel how possessive the man was from the way he held her around her waist. His words even sounded like she was something he purchased and didn't allow anyone to take away from him. Hold up, isn't he taking it a little too far? Sure enough, Luke grew anxious as soon as he heard those words. He blurted out, Joey, the order should matter, no. I was the one who got to know you and fell for you first. You and he have only known each other for a few days. What if you are deceived by him? Men like him always have tons of women by their side. He must think of you as his plaything. Luke had always thought that he was a good judge of character. He could tell at a glance that Ethan was neither short on money nor women. 
Men who live frivolously like him were surely involved with more women than one could count. Josephine, who didn't expect Luke to feel so deeply for her, sincerely apologized. I know that you like me, Luke, and I'm grateful that you like me so much. However, you can't force feelings. I've always thought of you as a friend. Chapter 2121 Josephine hadn't accepted even one gift that Luke gave her throughout the time he pursued her, and neither did she ever give any suggestive remarks. Luke had been one-sidedly pursuing her all this while. Although Josephine and I have only known each other for a few days, my love for her is no less than yours. You should back off, Ethan warned Luke. Why should I? Luke immediately blew his top. He was still reluctant to give up on Josephine and her grandfather's connections. He couldn't just let go, considering how his company needed those connections to build up its network. This happened to be something about Luke that Ethan had seen through. It seems to me you're not in love with Josephine. You have your eyes on her grandfather's authority and connections, huh? Someone like you does not deserve to love Josephine. Luke was completely triggered by Ethan's words. He suddenly roared, Ethan quarrels, this is my territory. You'd better not mess with me, or I will make life a living hell for you. Josephine was taken aback by how Luke suddenly threatened Ethan, and she quickly tried to persuade Luke to calm down. How am I supposed to stay calm? I've been pursuing you for a year, and now someone else got in the way and took you away from me. Do look like a pushover. I need to teach him a lesson, he thought. Seeing how agitated Luke was, Josephine took a deep breath and insisted, Luke, it doesn't matter who came first. I was the one who fell for Ethan and actively pursued him. It has nothing to do with him. Play volume 000 100 Truvidful Screen. Josephine's words seemed to have stabbed Luke right where it hurt. It felt like he had lost his sanity at this very moment as his dignity as a man was trampled on. No matter what, he knew he needed to vent his anger toward Ethan. His fists were already clenched as he stared at Josephine with an unwilling gaze. Josephine, do you really like him that much? It was obvious that Luke had lost his temper after being embarrassed. He was also no longer patient or polite toward Josephine. She firmly answered him, yes, I love him. Suddenly, Josephine was roughly shoved by Luke, whose clenched fist was already swinging at Ethan's face. When he raised his fist, Josephine, who had been pushed aside, almost instinctively pushed back. Luke couldn't stop his punch in time. Bam! The fist socked Josephine straight on the cheek, hurting her so badly that she fell back into Ethan's arms. Ethan wanted to protect Josephine, but his hand was a second too late. As he tightly hugged the woman, he sent Luke flying when he kicked out with his long leg. However, the corner of Josephine's mouth was already torn, as it started bleeding as she lay against his chest. Josephine. Ethan's heart was broken as he called out to her. He wanted nothing more than to punch himself across the face when he saw the blood trickle from her mouth. Meanwhile, Luke got up and started panicking. He didn't expect to hit Josephine in the face. He finally came back to his senses when he saw the pale woman drenched in cold sweat, leaning against Ethan's chest with blood trickling from the corner of her mouth. Joey, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. He tried to approach her, only to hear the other man angrily yell at him. F asterisk CK off. Stay away from her. Ethan's gaze shot at Luke like a sharp knife, and he protected Josephine in his arms with his torso so that Luke wouldn't hurt her anymore. Josephine's cheek hurt so badly that she couldn't speak, but still, she uttered in a hoarse voice, let's go. Josephine, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I wasn't trying to hit you. Luke finally realized that he and Josephine couldn't even be friends after his punch. She glanced back at him. Luke, I know you didn't hit me on purpose. I willingly took the punch on his behalf. Ethan's eyes narrowed when he heard that. Don't ever do something so stupid again, he grunted as he held her close. His heart ached for her. Josephine tried to put on a smile, but the movement tugged on her injury, making her hiss in pain. All right, stop talking. I'll take you to the hospital. Ethan helped her out of the private room after saying that. Luke was left to blame himself. He truly did love Josephine, but he no longer had the right to seek her hand. Josephine went for a checkup at a nearby hospital. The examination showed only skin swelling and a cut on the corner of her mouth. 
However, half of her face had become swollen, making her too embarrassed to see anyone. She didn't want to see Ethan, as she wondered if he would find her appearance ridiculous and unattractive. I won't eat dinner. I want to go home. D don't bother walking me back. I'll take a cab, Josephine said as she held onto her swollen face and tried to leave quickly. Seeing through her thoughts, Ethan couldn't help but chuckle and ask, What? Do you think I will find you unappealing because of your appearance? She remained silent without responding, prompting him to state firmly, I will only feel sorry for you, never disgusted. I can't face my parents right now. I'm afraid they'll think I've been bullied outside, especially, if I tell my grandfather. I can't go home. Josephine quickly thought of this and looked at the man who didn't mind her appearance. Can I stay in your hotel suite for two nights until my swelling goes down? Of course, Ethan replied, thinking he needed to buy a villa as soon as possible. He couldn't keep letting this girl stay in the hotel with him forever. Back in the car, Ethan thought about what Josephine had said to Luke earlier and turned to ask her, are those words you said earlier genuine? Josephine blinked, immediately recalling what she had said earlier. One side of her face blushed as she mumbled, I just wanted to dispel Luke's thoughts of pursuing me. Play volume 0000 000 Truvid full screen. She hadn't given much thought to whether it was sincere or not. Those words had just come out without much consideration. Anyway, I'm touched tonight, Ethan said happily, even though she had suffered. Josephine blinked. She was willing to take that punch for him. She would have been heartbroken if Luke had punched Ethan in his handsome face. Forget it. I'll take the pain. Since she had insisted on bringing Ethan here tonight, she could not possibly let him get hurt. Josephine told her mother she had to stay, temporarily with her colleague to complete, their work. Her mother asked who the colleague was and whether it was a man or a woman. Josephine replied that it was Ren, and her mother agreed. With a swollen face, Josephine followed Ethan back to his hotel. He ordered a big meal when they arrived since they were both hungry. Josephine went to the bathroom and looked at her swollen, red face in the mirror, feeling bitter inside when will the swelling go down. I'm not pretty right now. They had a romantic dinner seated by the French windows, but Josephine couldn't shake off the feeling of misery. She lowered her head and ate her food in small bites. However, it occasionally tugged at her wound, causing her to gasp in pain. Take your time, Ethan urged her on the other end. Josephine put down half of her hair to cover up her swollen face. Ethan saw her small actions, but he didn't know how to comfort her. Truth was, he genuinely didn't care. Even with half of Josephine's face swollen, it didn't affect his fondness for her. After dinner, Josephine suddenly remembered that she had to work overtime to finish her article that night. Goodness, I still have to write a news article. I need it early tomorrow morning. Josephine finished eating and sat on the couch, thereafter turning on her computer to start working. Her slender fingers danced on the keyboard, showing her experience in writing news articles. It was said that hardworking men were the most handsome, but hardworking women were equally charming. Ethan sat at the table, holding a glass of red wine, admiring how this woman worked seriously. He couldn't take his eyes off her. Josephine's hair covered one side of her swollen face, but the other side remained delicate and beautiful under the light. Her gaze exuded a professional and competent aura. Ethan felt sorry for her and brought a glass of water over, placing it in front of her. Take a sip of water before you continue writing. Josephine picked up the water glass and murmured gratefully, thank you. Meanwhile, Ethan sat on the couch, staring at her screen. She blushed a little and mumbled, don't look. It was because she was writing a piece that mentioned the relationship between the sexes. Although she had never been in a serious relationship, her words were delicate and sharp when she wrote this type of article, as if she were an experienced person in love. Truth was, Josephine was a girl who often burst out with dirty jokes among her colleagues, and sometimes with her friends too. Join Telegram group for fast update and novel query. Why can't I look? Ethan couldn't help but ask with a smile when he noticed the headline she wrote, Who likes doing the deed more, men or women? I just don't want you to look. Josephine covered her computer and blushed. Where did you get the experience to write these news articles? 
The man did not let her off the hook and continued to ask. Josephine's face turned red upon realizing that Ethan had seen what she wrote. Have you never heard of someone imagining things? She stuttered. Ethan burst out laughing. Are you writing based on your imagination? We conducted a survey report. With that, she moved her computer to the couch to write. While writing, she muttered, I will also have to send the manuscript to my desk later. Ethan was slightly surprised to hear that. It's so late. Are you returning to the company? Yeah, I'll have someone else send it for you. It's too late, so don't go. Ethan felt sorry for her. After all, she got beaten up today and needed rest. Really, thank you. In fact, Josephine didn't want to face her colleagues now. Their imagination was even richer than hers. They would surely spread rumors about her being the homewrecker who got beaten up by the original partner. There would be no reasoning with them. It was not until 11 p.m. that Josephine handed the manuscript to the person Ethan had summoned. After that, she went into the bathroom and looked around. She didn't know if it was because of the medicine she applied or her young age, but the swelling on her face had disappeared. She looked no different from usual, except that it was still red. After coming out of the bathroom, Josephine looked at Ethan, who was in the master bedroom. She thought she should go over and say a few words before closing the door and going to bed. She saw that the bedroom door was not closed, so she walked over. However, before she could knock, a warm figure with only a bath towel wrapped around the waist appeared before her eyes. He had broad, sturdy honey-colored chest muscles and solid, tough muscle lines below the abs. After the shower, there were even some blood vessels showing. At that sight, Josephine mused, what a great body. He's parading it for me. Ethan looked at her dumbfounded expression and was open about it, ruffling his wet hair and asking with a smile, like what you see. Josephine gulped discreetly, forcing herself to move her eyes away and stare at the floor. She blushed and mumbled, I'm returning to my room. Good night. Wait a minute. Hum. Josephine quickly stopped in her tracks. The man suddenly picked up a bag and handed it to her. Here's the pajamas I prepared for you. Huh. You prepared pajamas for me. Surprised, Josephine took the bag and saw a thin, burgundy nightgown inside. Her mind buzzed for a moment. It's rather sexy, isn't it? Let me see the injury on your face. The man was still unsure about her face and wanted to recheck it before she went to bed. Josephine quickly took a step back. T that's all right. I'm fine. It was already ugly enough. She couldn't possibly show it to him. Good night, Josephine said and backed out of the doorway, returning to her room. She was still a bit uneasy and her mind was filled with the image of Ethan's perfect body. She realized the handsome guys she usually saw were nothing compared to him. Ethan's figure is genuinely top-notch. I should have looked at him more instead of being shy just now. Who knows when I will get another chance. Josephine quickly took a shower and put on the nightgown that Ethan had given her. It fit her, perfectly, revealing her charming curves which were usually hidden under her formal attire. Josephine wanted to grab her cell phone but left it on the couch outside. She wasn't sleepy and wanted to watch some news, so she decided to go and get it. She thought that Ethan might have already gone to bed. Feeling lucky, Josephine opened the door, hoping to get her cell phone quickly and sneak back to her room. However, life was nothing if not unpredictable. Just as she headed toward the couch, a man wearing only his pajama pants appeared from the balcony where he had just finished a call. Join Telegram Group for fast update and novel query the two of them met in the dimly lit living room. Josephine's mind went blank. She hugged her chest awkwardly and said, I'm looking for my phone. Ethan squinted and admired her in her wine-red nightgown. It was just as he imagined. He knew that her perfect body, which men couldn't help but fantasize about, was hidden underneath her formal work clothes. Josephine searched through the couch cushions, but the more she hurriedly looked for her cell phone, the harder it was to find it. Do you need any help? Ethan shook his cell phone. All he had to do was make a call and they would be able to locate the phone. Josephine looked at him with a pleading expression. Please help me find it. Ethan called Josephine's cell phone and discovered it was wedged into the gap in the couch. Josephine was speechless upon seeing that. I must have accidentally pushed it into the gap. 
She tried to retrieve it but couldn't. At that, Ethan quickly approached her. Bending down, he offered, I'll do it. Josephine breathed, a hint of an alluring scent emanating from her as her pretty face blushed. She took two steps back, placing one hand over her chest. She found it amusing that two people dressed like that were here to fetch her phone. Can't something elegant and romantic happen between us? Ethan's fingers were long and he quickly picked up her phone. Josephine took it gratefully and thanked him. Ethan scanned her nightgown. The design of the two straps was subtle under the light. It looked as if it was made to be easily torn off, arousing thoughts of carnal desire in a man's mind. On the other hand, Josephine was getting nervous and flustered. Ethan had just moved the couch with force, and now it was diagonally in front of her. However, she didn't notice it. As she turned around, she stumbled over it. Ah, she cried out as her head hit the back of the couch, leaving her kneeling in a miserable heap. Are you okay? Ethan quickly reached out to hold her, his calloused palms filled with manly, strength touching her waist through her thin nightgown. Before she could react, he had picked her up in his arms. She covered her forehead, feeling both shy and embarrassed. The two of them tightly embraced each other, with Ethan's hand gently rubbing her forehead. Does it hurt? And no, I'm fine, she replied, but at the moment, she was more focused on the fact that she was lying in his arms. I'm going back to my room, a flushed Josephine added. However, Ethan suddenly carried her and took her straight back to her room. I'll carry you back to your room, so you won't fall again, he murmured. I should have checked my horoscope before going out today. Josephine was rather speechless at that point as she wondered why she kept getting hurt today. Ethan laughed and said, do you remember what you said? What? Josephine didn't have a good memory. You said I'm a jinx reborn and whenever you're around me, you have bad luck, Ethan commented. She immediately covered her face in regret. I take back that statement. She muttered. I was just angry at the time. Please don't take it to heart. Josephine had both hands covering her face, which meant that her chest was not covered. Coupled with her being held in Ethan's arms, the nightgown's low V-neck neckline was open to Ethan. Ethan's sexy Adam's apple bobbed twice. The woman emanating a light fragrance in his arms kept stirring up the fire hidden in his heart for 27 years. Ethan carried her directly back to the bed while Josephine covered her face as if she was ashamed. At this moment, the man leaned over and kissed her on her delicate collarbone as if demanding payment. Josephine was shocked and she exclaimed out loud. She opened her eyes, only to see Ethan holding her head between his hands, his burning gaze fixed on her. I'm sealing the deal. Join Telegram group for fast update and novel query Josephine blinked her beautiful eyes, not understanding what he meant. The man looked at her and growled hoarsely, mine. Josephine suddenly understood what he meant and buried her face in the blanket. Ethan, go back to your room and sleep. Ethan laughed and looked at the embarrassed woman before him. He didn't tease her anymore and got up to leave. Although Josephine was shy, she was still happy deep down. It was just that she had a feeling of being watched and unable to escape. The next morning, Josephine got up and hurriedly went to the bathroom. She was relieved to see that her face was much better. However, she still had to stay with Ethan for two more days. Josephine wondered if she could ask for a day off today. She couldn't help but laugh at the thought isn't the boss of the company right by my side. It shouldn't be difficult to take a day off. And so, she put on a bathrobe and went out. Meanwhile, Ethan had already gotten up and was standing on the balcony, enjoying the scenery. Mr. Quarles, can I take a day off? Josephine asked. Sure. Ethan turned around and added, is one week enough? Huh, really? I can take a whole week off. Josephine was overjoyed upon hearing that. Taking time off from the TV station was difficult. It's a piece of cake for me, Ethan said. He suddenly realized that becoming her boss meant providing her with these benefits. I'll take three days off first, then. Josephine didn't need a week off. Three days would be enough. Ethan quickly made a phone call to Atticus to approve Josephine's three days off. Josephine felt utterly relaxed as she was able to take three days off. She held her face and looked at the scenery of the bustling traffic in the distance. Being able to have a day of leisure made her very happy. Come on, let's go downstairs for breakfast, Ethan said to her. 
Josephine suddenly thought, can I take him shopping? She wanted to go shopping during her time off. Usually, she didn't have time to buy clothes. Okay, after breakfast, can you come shopping with me? Josephine asked while looking up. Of course, Ethan smiled. He wanted to buy her some clothes too. After finishing breakfast, Josephine used the only makeup she had in her bag to apply some light makeup, mainly covering the slightly red half of her face. The injury was not visible under the light makeup. Ethan drove her to the mall in his sports car. While shopping, Josephine was finally able to experience the feeling of being envied by others because when Ethan held her hand, the women around them looked at her with envy. After browsing several branded stores, Ethan picked out eight sets of clothes for her, which Josephine could tell were intended as gifts. She didn't refuse and willingly went along with it this time. She also realized that she had given him something to hold over her head and had to be prepared for the consequences. When they were tired from shopping, they went to have lunch and continued in the afternoon. Josephine thought that Ethan would get tired, but it turned out that she was the one who got tired because he couldn't stop buying things. They went from clothes to jewelry, and he finally took her to a real estate agency, where he wanted Josephine to help him choose a house. He wanted to settle down in this city. At first, Josephine was surprised and asked, why do you want to settle down here? Ethan looked at her and said, because of you. Josephine was shocked. Ethan wants to settle down in this city for me, eh? However, looking for a house wasn't easy, Saul Ethan left it to his assistants to handle. When they returned to the hotel after dinner, it was already 9.30 p.m. and Josephine was exhausted from walking around. She took off her makeup and looked at herself in the mirror, her expression betraying a hint of exhaustion. All she wanted to do was take a shower and go to bed. Josephine took a shower and thought about it, then decided to go out and bid Ethan good night. She wore one of her shirts over her pajamas before pushing the door open. She knew it looked a little odd, but she didn't care. At that moment, the man was elegantly opening a bottle of red wine at the small bar. Josephine was slightly stunned to see that. Is he going to get drunk? Would you like a glass? Ethan asked her. Josephine was delighted. She didn't love drinking, but she didn't want to miss this beautiful moment. Drinking a glass with Ethan would feel great. Nodding, she walked over and sat on the chair as she waited for him. Meanwhile, Ethan poured half a glass of wine and handed it over. Josephine took a sip, noting that it was sweet grape wine. Delicious. Josephine smiled. Ethan raised his glass and clinked it with hers, enjoying the wine, Josephine looked at his sexy and charming jawline, not to mention the throbbing of his Adam's apple when he swallowed the wine, which was almost lethal. Ethan Quarles was elegant and attractive in everything he did. Even his drinking a glass of wine could make people swoon. Cheers. Josephine also took the initiative to clink her glass with his. Ethan smiled and took another sip. He propped his chin up, and the duo's faces were instantly inches apart. They gazed at each other under the light, sizing each other up. Josephine also plucked up her courage under the influence of alcohol, and just like that, she greedily stared at the man's face. She found a small mole on the tip of his nose, adding a different sense of dimensionality to his appearance. Am I good looking? Ethan asked her. What do you think? Josephine countered. The man chuckled deeply. Can't get enough of it. Josephine blushed, then puffed her cheeks and murmured, me too. Is this a confession? Ethan asked again. Josephine took a sip of her red wine before pursing her lips and smiling. You can think of it that way. Let's date, then, Ethan stated in earnest. Meanwhile, Josephine blinked and didn't pretend anymore. Okay, but I have to ask you two questions and you have to answer me truthfully. Ethan was taken aback but he hoarsely murmured, sure thing. Ask away. Firstly, do you have a formal girlfriend overseas? Josephine asked. Ethan thought about it momentarily before shaking his head seriously and replying, no. Would your family approve of you dating a girl from a family like mine? Josephine asked again. Ethan was startled for a moment. After giving it some thought, he stated, my family hasn't made any such demands of me. They want me to be with a girl I like. After hearing this, Josephine nodded and said, Okay, then. Let's date. She didn't want to let Ethan go. 
he was sent to her by fate, so she was determined to seize the opportunity. Whether she was after his money or his person, the fact was that she had fallen for him and had a strong desire to be with him. Ethan put down his glass and stood up. He leaned close to Josephine, his handsome face closing the distance. Josephine's breathing hitched as she thought, is he going to kiss me? She closed her eyes and let his thin lips press down on hers, but it wasn't a deep kiss. Josephine was a little confused as to why it was only a brief kiss, but the man chuckled and explained, your lip was injured yesterday. You should rest a few days before we kiss again. Josephine blushed, realizing that Ethan had noticed that detail. However, she felt slightly unsatisfied. Okay. Josephine then finished her drink and said, I'm going to bed. You should get some rest too. At that, Ethan gently bid her good night. Good night, Josephine turned back and replied before going to her room, feeling satisfied and filled with expectations for the future. The following morning, Ethan received a call from Jared. Jared thought Ethan had returned, not knowing the latter was still in Averna. You're still in the city. Yes, I'm staying here for half a year for now. It seems you're serious about Miss Jacobson. We're officially dating now, let's have lunch in the afternoon and get to know each other. Jared invited. Sure, let's meet, Ethan replied. Josephine came out of the room, feeling honored when she heard she would have lunch with the Presgrave couple. At 12 p.m., Jared brought Ellen along, who was already five months pregnant and had a slightly protruding belly. However, her figure was still as slender as a young girl's. She wore a delicate champagne satin dress that exuded an elegant aura. She had naturally cultivated her temperament as befitting Jared's wife. Jared. Ethan went up and gave Jared a fist bump. The two men had their own way of greeting each other. Ellen looked at Josephine. She had heard that the latter had met and fallen in love with Ethan at their wedding, which was why she remembered Josephine. Miss Jacobson, you caught my bouquet, didn't you? Ellen asked with a smile. Josephine nodded proudly. Yes, I caught it. It seems fate brought you together. It means that the next wedding will be yours. Ellen said excitedly. Josephine blushed a little but still yearned for it in her heart. After all, once she got together with Ethan, she would surely want to get married. I hope so, Josephine murmured with a smile. The two women were of similar age and had many topics to discuss. Their personalities were also similar and their other halves were good friends, so they naturally wanted to become best friends and be close to each other. After lunch, the two couples parted ways. Jared accompanied Ellen to have a prenatal checkup in the afternoon while Ethan took Josephine for a drive to relax. The three-day holiday passed quickly, in which Josephine rarely checked the group messages. There were lively discussions about her relationship with Ethan and various rumors were spreading in the group she had set to, do not disturb. In some private groups, Josephine was labeled as a vixen who seduced the major shareholder to get promoted by any means necessary. Katrina was the first to take the lead in every group where she was present. She would harshly criticize Josephine and reveal how the young woman had seduced Ethan at the dinner table. It instantly piqued people's interest in the drama. Finally, Ren couldn't help but ask Josephine directly. Josephine was stunned for a few seconds as she looked at the message sent by Ren. Ren had asked, Joey, did you seduce our new boss for Miss Ain's position? Josephine quickly asked, where did you hear that from? Everyone in the company's groups is talking about you. Don't you know? Ren replied, what? Josephine felt overwhelmed. Who is spreading rumors and causing trouble? Is it true that the sports car was a gift from the president? Josephine knew she couldn't hide it anymore and replied, yes, it was a gift from him. Are you really dating him? Just then, Josephine was reading a message in the group that said, how could Josephine do this? Seducing the boss to get promoted is so unethical. Josephine snorted and replied directly, sorry, we're dating. Josephine's response in the group chat shocked all the employees who were online as the person involved had now admitted to it. Just then, a message from Katrina came in. Josephine, how shameless can you be? You say you're dating, but do you have any evidence? Yeah, that's not enough. We want to see the evidence. Right. We won't believe it unless you post a selfie with Mr. Quarles. Josephine, I dare you to send it. 
Some employees who didn't like Josephine were eager to kick her while she was down. They were convinced that Josephine was putting on a show, thinking she was fake dating the boss. You were ridiculous. Pick a better lie to tell. Another employee replied. At that, Katrina chimed in, she's delusional. Just then, the group administrator received a request from a new member to join the group. The administrator immediately approved the request and the group's profile picture, which used to be a photograph of a landscape, was replaced with a male selfie. The nickname was also changed to, Ethan. I, Ethan Quarles, hereby certify that Josephine Jacobson is my girlfriend. This sentence came as a bombshell to the group. Silence ensued and no one dared to speak up for almost a minute. Even the voices that had previously criticized and suppressed Josephine disappeared. No one dared to question the man's identity or the authenticity of his statement. Are you Mr. Quarles? Katrina asked boldly. Yes, came the concise response. At this moment, Josephine was staring at her phone, leaning on Ethan's shoulder on the hotel couch as she happily read the messages in the group. She accidentally showed the chat to him, and Ethan insisted on joining the company's group chat, leading to the current situation. Hello, Mr. Quarles. Mr. Quarles, you're so handsome. Good afternoon, Mr. Quarles. Ethan's appearance was a slap in the face for many people in the group, effectively making them shut their mouths and stopping them from gossiping. Meanwhile, Katrina, who was seated at her desk in the company, couldn't help but think about whether or not she should add Ethan on Telegram so they could chat privately. Feeling bold, she gritted her teeth and sent him a friend request. However, after waiting for half an hour, there was no response from Ethan's end. She couldn't help but feel frustrated, wondering if Josephine had discovered her private request. Her face turned red out of embarrassment and she hoped Josephine didn't know about it. What if Ethan simply hasn't seen it yet? Maybe he will add me if he does. Ethan only said a few words in the group before disappearing, and the previously lively group was now subdued by his imposing presence. It caused the gossip-loving members to avoid chatting there, for fear that the boss might catch them. Soon, the group administrator announced, Mr. Quarles has left the group. What? Why did he leave? I wanted to say hi to him. Someone typed. The boss just came on to prove that Josephine is his girlfriend. Oh my god. He spoils her so much, another added. He's so cool, so mysterious and sophisticated. I love him. Forget it. He belongs to Josephine, Ren replied. Goodness. This is awesome. I just clicked on his profile picture. That face of his is killing me. Someone else texted. He looks so good in the selfie. Did she save the galaxy in her past life to have such luck? Maybe it's good karma. At that moment, Josephine was holding Ethan's cell phone. She was the one who had left the group for him. She understood everyone's feelings. With him around, no one would dare to chat. But as Josephine read the flood of messages that followed, she couldn't help but feel amused and bemused. It seemed like leaving the group had only made people pay more attention to her. The next day, Josephine would start her work again, and she couldn't imagine what kind of treatment she would receive at the company now. At this moment, Katrina, who was waiting for Ethan to accept her request, was left disappointed when he didn't do so even after work. She was so embarrassed that she bit her lip hard. She couldn't help but go to the restroom and check herself in the mirror. She knew she was beautiful, but why wouldn't Ethan notice her? Why won't he accept me? Katrina thought to herself. That night, Josephine watched a game with Ethan. She grew tired, so she leaned against him and fell asleep. After some time, Ethan turned off the TV and carried her in his arms. Josephine woke up but pretended to be asleep. I won't mind if he wants to break the boundaries of our relationship, she mused. After all, as a 25-year-old, I have needs too. Ethan only kissed her forehead and tucked her in before leaving the room, though. Josephine was left speechless and frustrated. Josephine opened her eyes after Ethan left the room, feeling a little disappointed in his reaction. After all, she had decided to pretend to struggle a bit before giving in and offering herself to him if he made a move on her. To her surprise, Ethan was a gentleman. Her hand circled the edge of her blanket as she cursed herself for having a dirty mind. In the meantime, she was fascinated by Ethan's character. 
He's an excellent man. I'll cherish such a kind man like him from today onward. After tossing and turning on the bed for a while, sleep finally took her. She snuggled under the blanket and fell asleep. The next morning, Josephine's preset phone alarm woke her from her sleep without mercy. She groggily reached out a hand from under the blanket and turned the alarm off. A moment later, she realized that it was another working day. At that, she reluctantly opened her eyes. Why do I have to leave my bed? I don't want to go to work. Even though Josephine was reluctant to wake up, she was dedicated to her job. After rolling out of her bed, she applied light makeup on her face. The bruise on her face had faded and her skin had been restored to an intact state. Everything seemed fine, aside from the little scrape at the corner of her lip. Josephine thought to herself, I'll just go to work without bothering anyone. I should let Ethan sleep. I bet he stayed up late last night. When she opened the door, the sight of a well-groomed man on the couch greeted her. She blinked in surprise. Why are you up so early? I want to give you a ride to work. Ethan smiled at her. However, Josephine turned down his offer. There's no need. I'll take a cab to work. You should go back to sleep. Ethan rose to his feet. No way. I won't allow it on my watch. At last, Josephine had no choice but to allow him to send her to work in his eye-catching sports car. She thought about the matter over on the way to the office. Now that everyone knows Ethan and I are seeing each other, I don't think we should do it in secret anymore as if we are ashamed of our relationship. That's right, I'll make our relationship public. The sports car eventually rolled to a stop in front of the company. Ethan wasn't able to accompany Josephine due to him having an appointment with the realtor later. And so, she got out of the car and waved goodbye. Be careful on the road. Ethan nodded. I'll pick you up after work. With that, he took his leave. Meanwhile, tons of envious eyes fell on Josephine. Holding her head high, Josephine walked into the company lobby at a steady pace. Her colleagues from other departments, whom she seldom dealt with, approached her and greeted her. Good morning, Josephine. Congratulations, Josephine. I'm looking forward to your wedding. Mr. Quarles is a handsome guy. You're so lucky to have him. The statements took Josephine aback. What's next? Are they going to urge us to start a family? She cleared her throat. Calm down, everyone. Let's not discuss personal matters at work. After that, Josephine returned to her seat. Just as she sat, people gathered around her. Josephine, why did Mr. Quarles leave the group chat? Do you think he'll rejoin the group chat? Josephine chuckled and replied, I'm not sure. Let's get back to work, everyone. We've got a long day ahead. Ren got Josephine a cup of coffee to go and set it on the table. After taking a seat beside her, Ren smiled. Mr. Quarles did a good job. The way he announced himself in the group chat and told Katrina off was like a slap in the face to her. Even her supporters didn't dare contradict him. Josephine had to admit that Ethan's behavior was satisfying. After all, people around the office didn't dare stand up against Katrina. Even Josephine herself got ridiculed by Katrina a few times. Katrina had it coming. Later, Josephine headed to the copy room. Katrina's voice caught her off guard. Josephine, you must be very proud. Josephine turned around and queried, what do you mean? I'm the victim in the story. It's all thanks to Ethan showing up in the group chat and backing me up, or else they wouldn't have stopped in the first place. Did you take Mr. Quarrel's phone and make everything up? A man like him will never bother to join the group chat, so it must be you. You have access to his phone, so you might have taken it and pretended to be him in the group chat. Katrina allowed her imagination to run wild and she was confident with her theory. After all, she remembered Ethan as a man of few words from their encounter back then. Josephine arched her brows in amusement. It really wasn't me. Then you must have shown him the messages. Of course. He was sitting next to me during that time. Since he asked to read the messages, I saw no point in hiding them, Josephine answered. I assume you're the one pursuing Mr. Quarles and not the other way around. You're quite shameless, aren't you? You must have used dirty tricks to seduce him. Katrina accused with her arms crossed. At this point, only by witnessing displays of affection between Ethan and Josephine would Katrina finally accept the fact that the couple had indeed gotten together.
Josephine chuckled at Katrina's attempt to accuse her. Does it matter? We are dating, anyway. Does it answer your question? Listen, I don't mean to sound discouraging, but you're not the woman for a man like him. Mr. Quarles is a popular man, and women won't hesitate to throw themselves at him. Besides, people nowadays are driven by lust and don't care about loyalty. What if a prettier woman with a stronger personality catches his eye? He would forget about your existence in a split second. Katrina sneered, trying to make Josephine anxious. Josephine paused for a moment before turning around to face Katrina. It's none of your business. However, Katrina knew not when to stop. What if he's talking to a pretty woman at the moment? What if they exchange numbers for the convenience of a little rendezvous? She continued. She was confident that her words would make Josephine uncomfortable. Her guess was right. Ethan was out house hunting at the moment, and the female realtors were good-looking and adept at taking the initiative. Thus, they wouldn't hesitate to jump at the chance when they met Ethan. Josephine exhaled and muttered, Don't you have better things to do? Katrina harumped at that. It's for your own good, Josephine. We are more alike than you think. A man like Ethan is out of our league. I don't want to see you become his plaything, which he abandons once he gets tired. When that time comes, a heartbroken mess is all you are. Katrina was getting on Josephine's nerves with the negative speech. Seeing no point in tolerating Katrina's nonsense, Josephine turned around and growled, enough. The corner of Katrina's lips curled into a sneer. How ungrateful of you. Fine, then. One day, you'll regret not listening to my words. After that, Katrina left. Even so, the words left a bitter taste at the back of Josephine's throat. Dealing with people like her is exhausting. There's no way I can be happy talking to her. Just as she returned to her seat, the phone she left on the table buzzed, notifying her of a new message. Ren reminded her, someone called you a moment ago. You might need to get back to them. Josephine grabbed her phone and unlocked it. The message was from Ethan. He had sent her the villa's address and a video of its exterior before asking for her opinion. The villa is located near your company, so I decided to buy it. What do you think? Josephine gaped at the address Ethan sent her. The price of detached villas around that area starts at 30 million. The one Ethan has eyes on must be worth more than that. She swallowed nervously and sent him a reply, you don't have to buy it for my convenience. Choose somewhere you like instead. As soon as she sent that, he called her. She quickly walked away from her seat and went to the corridor so that nobody would disturb her. She answered the call, hello. Ethan's low voice reached her. I like this place, so I bought it. Josephine laughed quietly when she heard such words. I can't believe I forgot his ability to buy things. Even though the villa is expensive for me, he doesn't share the same worry. All right. I'm glad you're happy, she replied with a smile. I'll try my best to move in within one week. Ethan then added, by the way, I've discussed the matter with the executives. You were promised the position of a news anchor. Josephine's mind went blank at his words. He's even giving me that. To be honest, I want to earn it myself. But Ethan's proposition changed a few things. I don't think I deserve it. I I want to fight for it myself. I want to prove myself worthy. Josephine refused to depend on Ethan. She didn't want such an exception just because she was his girlfriend. Even if it's silly to let my chance slip. His low chuckle came from the other side of the phone. All right. We'll go through with the procedure. However, I'm confident that the position will eventually be yours. Chapter 2131 Thank you, Ethan. Deep down, Josephine was touched by his gesture. I feel like he's investing in the company for me. There's no need to thank me. It's always been your dream, no. And I'm glad I can make your dream come true, answered Ethan in a low voice. That's why I threw a lot of money in. I want her to be happy. How can I repay you? Josephine bit her lip. Ethan has been a big help. I can't just take advantage of him after he helps me with many things. A simple thank you, isn't enough to express my gratitude. It's not a big deal. I'm happy to help, really. Ethan insisted on not taking anything from her. However, Josephine still planned on giving him something in return. I can't take it for granted. Josephine smiled. I don't need anything. 
I heard that you have been interested in the position of a news anchor. Since you're excelling in your job and also studied broadcast communication back in university, I don't see a problem in promoting you to a news anchor. It's my fault for overlooking an employee as excellent as you and wasting your talents, Attica said. Josephine let out a strained chuckle. When the assistant returned to her office, she called Katrina out of spite. When the call connected, she cut to the chase. Can you believe it, Kat? A while ago, Mr. Kowalski asked me to prepare the best tea we have for his guest. I thought he was seeing someone important, but it turned out to be Josephine. I don't understand why she has gotten so lucky to the degree that even Mr. Kowalski has to grovel at her. What? Is Josephine in a meeting with Atticus? Katrina asked nervously. Yes. I think they're talking about work. Anyway, I don't think anybody can ever match her status in the company from this moment on. I'll be right there. With that, Katrina hung up the phone. Soon, she showed up in the corridor and arrived at the door of Atticus' office. Due to her experience in eavesdropping, she was aware that she could open the door without alerting anyone in the office if she pressed the door handle hard. As the assistant kept watch for her, she quietly pushed the door open and listened into the ongoing conversation in the office. Meanwhile, Atticus was offering Josephine a promotion to become a news anchor. He insisted on his offer. Josephine, let's do it this way you take up Ain's position first. I'll assign her another job when she returns. Is that really okay? Josephine hesitated as she mused to herself, I'm just filling the vacancy when Ain is not around. It's two years at most. After all, Ain needs such a long time to recover. There's nothing wrong about it. I'm the director here. It's up to me to decide whom I want to promote. Besides, you're Mr. Quarrel's girlfriend. I can't possibly allow you to remain a reporter and have you experience the bad weather. Mr. Quarles won't like it, Atticus explained. Katrina was boiling in anger when she heard such words from Atticus. I've had enough. At that, she pushed the door open and stormed inside. Atticus, that's not fair. I'm not bad myself, aren't I? I can also handle the position. Katrina didn't bother to tone down her anger. The commotion took Josephine aback. Has Katrina been eavesdropping this whole time? Katrina turned to Josephine without warning and accused, Josephine, do you have no shame at all? You can't accept Atticus' offer. Why not? I believe that I'm competent, Josephine arched her brows and countered. HMPH, you're not the only competent person in the company. Others are also capable of taking this position. Katrina huffed. It's just not fair to the others. What's so special about her that you're letting her take the job? Atticus, you promised me the same. Don't be ridiculous, Kat. We're at work. It's about business. Atticus pulled a long face. Katrina had always been a nuisance to him. It's unfair. I suggest going through an interview and a test. She has to do the same and pass if you want me to let the matter drop. Or else I'll make it known among the employees. Katrina refused to back down. Josephine turned to Atticus. I agree with her, Mr. Kowalski. We'll do it fair and square. After that, Josephine rose from her seat and took her leave. Katrina followed suit and caught up with her, sneering, Josephine, do you really think you can do whatever you want just because you have a big shot like Mr. Quarles to back you up? The accusation took Josephine aback, and she turned around to explain, I won't bring my personal life to work, or the other way around. I know the difference. You would have accepted Atticus' offer to promote you if I didn't stop both of you in time, no. Katrina crossed her arms, pleased to have sabotaged Josephine's promotion. Honestly, I agree with you on this matter. We'll do it fair and square, Josephine answered calmly. HMPH, are you really expecting me to believe it? Suit yourself. Josephine didn't bother to explain further. Since there was nobody around, Katrina shot Josephine a bold question. Just how did you manage to wrap Mr. Quarles around your finger? You must have done something. Did you sleep with each other? Josephine exhaled. She could feel the irritation inside her grow. She turned around, not holding back the bite in her tone. It doesn't concern you. Katrina paused for a moment before she retorted, looks like I'm right. You've got to the home base. Josephine lost her patience, so she didn't bother to reply. 
Meanwhile, a jealous Katrina was glaring at Josephine so hard that her eyes reddened. Ethan has a tall and strong body that rivals a model. Other men are no match for him. I would do the same if I were in her shoes. Sleeping with Ethan is something to boast about for the rest of my life. All I need to do is wait for Ethan to get tired of Josephine. At that time, it would be my turn. Josephine returned to the office, but she heard the discussion going on around her. Most of the staff were envious and amazed. After all, Josephine was invisible around the company most of the time, so it was quite a feat that she knew the largest shareholder. Besides, many women worked in the TV station, and most of them were beautiful. The broadcasters and news anchors, each with their own beauty, were the station's image. How did a reporter like Josephine wrap the largest shareholder around her finger? Meanwhile, a gorgeous woman walked into Atticus' office, her purse in hand. Atticus greeted her, you're early, Tori. I thought we were meeting up in the afternoon. Tori cut to the chase with her arms crossed, Mr. Kowalski, I heard that there's a replacement for the company's largest shareholder. Why didn't you tell me about that? Will you ever introduce me to him? Oh, you're talking about Mr. Quarles, I presume. I heard that not only is he young and handsome, but he's also wealthy. You should have introduced me to such a good man. Even though Tori was smiling, she couldn't hide the resentment in her expression. Atticus didn't need more words to understand Tori's motives. She was a famous news anchor in the industry. Besides, she was also young and single. She had been dating some rich men before, but all her relationships ended up in a breakup. Now that she was single, she was looking for her next target. Sure, I'll arrange a meal with you and Mr. Quarles. It's time to introduce our best television anchor to him. Atticus didn't dare outright reject Tori. After all, he spent a fortune to poach her. Furthermore, she was a well-known figure in the field. Mr. Kowalski, how did the reporter girl Josephine meet Mr. Quarles? The same question was bugging Tori. This Josephine is quite something. She's a step ahead of all the women out there. I'm not sure, but I guess they've known each other for a long time. After all, Josephine's grandfather is quite famous in political circles. It's natural if she knows all the big shots. His words convinced Tori. However, her face was filled with confidence as she decided to compete with Josephine for Ethan's attention. She happened to come across the pictures in the group chat the other day. The pictures that captured Ethan's face and body stunned her. Besides, the way he gave Josephine a Ferrari as a gift also surprised Tori. The most expensive gifts Tori had ever received were designer bags, but Josephine surpassed her achievement in a split second by receiving a sports car as a gift. Previously, Tori was on a study trip outside the company and only returned this morning. I can't believe I missed all the drama. All right, Mr. Kowalski. I hold you to your word about the meal between the three of us. I'm looking forward to getting to know Mr. Quarles better. With that, Tori left the office. Just when she started to make her way back to her office, she changed her mind and took a detour into the elevator. She pressed the button to the level where Josephine's office was located. I wonder what Josephine looks like. Meanwhile, Josephine was seated at her desk in the office. She was enjoying a cup of coffee while talking to Ren. The moment Tori stepped into the office, she caught the attention of a group of male workers. Walking around the office, she searched for a specific person until a nameplate came into view. Then, she raised her head and studied the face of the nameplate's owner. She indeed looks pretty. She could have become prettier if she paid attention to her appearance. However, nobody in the TV station can ever steal the spot of the company's beauty queen from me. Miss Alford, are you looking for someone? An assistant approached her. No, I'm not looking for anyone. I'm just walking around. Don't let me keep you. You should return to work. At that, Tori cast Josephine one last glance before turning on her heel and leaving. After dealing with all the tasks at hand, Josephine was eagerly anticipating the arrival of the evening and meeting with Ethan. She couldn't wait to see him after getting off work. However, she planned to go home and see her mother as well. I need to tell mom. Josephine decided to ask, Ren, can I bother you for a minute? What is it? What can I help you with? I'm calling my mother to tell her that I'm staying at your place for work purposes over the next week. 
I need you to cover up for me. At the end of her sentence, Josephine was already blushing. Since Ren also had a boyfriend, she could understand the reason for Josephine asking for help. Therefore, she kindly agreed to help Josephine. Sure, call her. I'll cover up for you. The pair headed to the pantry before Josephine dialed her mother's number. Hello, Joey. Are you coming home tonight or are you working late today? I haven't finished my work. Mom, here's the thing I also need to stay at my colleague's place over the next week. I'll go home later and grab a few things before leaving for her place. At that moment, Ren took the phone and enthusiastically greeted Heidi, Hello, Mrs. Jacobson, I'm Ren. Lately, we are working on summarizing an important work report, so we have to work together. Oh, it's you, Ren. Thanks for having Joey over. I'm counting on you to take care of her. Heidi was instantly convinced by Ren's words. Rest assured, Mrs. Jacobson. I'll take good care of her. Ren promised. Josephine eventually took the phone back. I have to go, Mom. I'll go home and pick up some clothes later. I'm not at home at the moment. You don't need to wait for me. All right, Mom. After Josephine hung up the phone, Ren couldn't help but lean in and whisper, Joey, did you move in with Mr. Quarles? The innocent question sent a blush to Josephine's face. A few seconds later, Shell nodded lightly. I did. That's so good. You have to be careful with such a boyfriend, though, Ren reminded her. How am I supposed to be careful? In my opinion, what's mine will always belong to me. And if it isn't destined to be mine, I can't bend it, to my will. Josephine had no idea about how she should react to what awaited her in the future. It's just that Mr. Quarles has a lot of admirers in our company, not to mention that he's an influential man. Just be careful, Ren murmured. At that moment, Josephine's phone rang, cutting their conversation short. She glanced at the screen. It's him. You should answer it. I won't keep you any longer. With that, Ren returned to her work. Josephine answered the call in a sweet voice, Hello. I'll be there in ten minutes. You can get ready now. Ethan's magnetic voice reached her from the other end of the line. Josephine hummed a response. All right. See you in ten minutes. She then went downstairs to wait for Ethan after grabbing her belongings. Since she made her relationship with Ethan public, she saw no point in worrying about others' opinions anymore. Josephine waited for Ethan's arrival at the intersection. It wasn't a long wait as the distant roar of the sports car's engine grew even louder until the car rolled to a stop in front of her. The window lowered, revealing Ethan's face. Get in the car, he urged. Josephine did as she was told and informed him, I want to go home first. I need to pack a few clothes. A glint of surprise flashed across Ethan's fathomless eyes. Have you decided to move in with me? Pursing her red lips in shyness, Josephine nodded. Yes, I want to get to know you, and have you learned new things about me too? Dating was a process to spend time together and get to know each other. Josephine doubted they could maintain their relationship without understanding each other. I'm glad to hear that. It was exactly what Ethan had in mind. Ethan then sent Josephine back to her house. Her mother was currently out with friends. Meanwhile, her father was always on a business trip. Thus, Josephine spent most of her time with her mother. Josephine rushed into the house and simply packed a few things before returning, downstairs. Even at this point, she was still a bit shy. After all, it was the first time she lied to her mother just for dating her boyfriend. She got into the sports car and Ethan drove her back to the hotel. Josephine sighed in relief. She did not bring any work home with her, so she had more time to herself. This morning, Ethan had snapped a few photos of the villa, and now he was sharing them with her. She was well aware that it was a rare opportunity to find detached villas downtown. It's beautiful. Are you looking forward to moving in with me? Ethan asked, reaching out his hand and putting his arm around her. Josephine nodded in excitement. Of course. We'll pick out furniture and other stuff for our new home this weekend. You can decide what you want. Ethan was looking forward to decorating the house with the woman he loved. He wanted to build a family with this woman and live a peaceful life with her. This was the first time in 27 years that he wanted to do that. She was moved by his words. 
She cuddled him as her mind filled with her future plan with him by her side. However, there were many blank spaces she struggled to fill. For example, his family and his career. All of them were located somewhere else. Will we last? Even a calm and rational woman like her refused to think about it. All she wanted was to stay with him as long as she could and never worried about their future. Josephine suddenly raised her head and locked eyes with Ethan. She saw desire deep down inside his eyes. It was lust he was hoping he could make a move. Josephine was blushing profusely at his clear intention. I I got my period. She noticed it in the office this afternoon. Thus, even though she intended to make it to the next base, she had to wait. Ethan burst into laughter before holding her tighter in his arms. He pressed a kiss intended as a punishment to her cheek. It's all right. I can wait. What matters the most is that she's ready. Josephine was grateful for such an unstable factor. After all, she was falling head over heels for Ethan at the moment. She needed some time to think about it. Josephine leaned into him. At that moment, Ethan's phone rang. He grabbed it and glanced at the caller ID before answering, Hello. Young master, when are you coming back? Ethan's subordinate asked. Half a year later. What about the ongoing project at the North Pole? Don't you need to supervise it yourself? Ethan narrowed his eyes. I have a more important task at hand than the project. Josephine was taking a nap as she curled up against Ethan like a kitten. When the words left him, her eyes fluttered open in disbelief. She allowed herself to immerse her emotions as she gazed at his sharp jawline. Is he referring to me? Does it mean he prioritizes me over his work? He felt her gaze on his face. He caressed her head while he was on the phone. He even bent down to kiss her on the head. The intimacy came out naturally, much like something a normal couple would do. She curled her lips upward as she snuggled up against his broad chest, content with relaxing next to him. After a long day of work, she was extremely happy to be able to find security in his arms. At night, Josephine and Ethan slept in separate rooms. Due to Ethan having a video conference, he asked Josephine to go to sleep first. Josephine got into bed early since she had to work the next day. However, she decided to read a book before sleep found her. After all, she wanted to prove herself worthy of the position of the news anchor. She was aware that aside from Katrina, the others might also think that she got the position through connections. However, Josephine hoped to get it with a clear conscience. She wanted the others to know that she was capable of depending on herself. Others' opinions don't matter. The most important thing is for me to stay true to myself. The next morning, Josephine woke up earlier than yesterday. Ethan hadn't woken up when she left the bedroom. Gently pushing his bedroom door open, she locked eyes with the man who opened his eyes at the light noise. Watching her slip in quietly like a cat, he put his arms under his head before asking with a smile, what's wrong? You don't have to send me off. My friend will be picking me up. Go back to sleep, hem. Josephine kissed Ethan on the cheek and added, I'll contact you later. Ethan checked the time and realized that Josephine had awoken half an hour earlier. He intended to send her off, but his alarm hadn't gone off. Seeing that she was leaving, he suddenly reached out his hand and held onto her. Josephine was dressed professionally, giving her the appearance of being both elegant and capable. Ethan really didn't want to let her leave like this. She fell on Ethan's blanket, her face flushed. What are you doing? She coquettishly murmured as she fluffed her long hair. I miss you. I've missed you all night, Ethan said, blinking his eyes pitifully as if he were an aggrieved child. Are you not going to compensate me for that? All sorts of images flashed across Josephine's mind. Compensate? What does he mean by this? Just as she was having impure thoughts, the man sat up and drew her into his embrace. Then, he gave her a peck on the neck and said, you can go now. Josephine's face turned completely red. Fine, I'm overthinking. She then dashed out the door so that Ethan wouldn't notice her flushed cheeks. Truth was, Josephine didn't have any friends to pick her up, so she hailed a cab instead. After reaching the company, she devoted all her attention to her work. Around 10 a.m., Ethan received Atticus' call. Atticus asked Ethan if they could meet for lunch because he had some job matters to report. Okay. I'll meet you at a restaurant near the company. 
bring Josephine as well. I'll surely bring Miss Jacobson along, Atticus replied. After hanging up the phone, he looked at the woman sitting on the couch and stated, Mr. Quarles asked me to bring Josephine together for lunch. Whatever for, it's enough for him to have my company, Tori said as she sat with her legs, crossed. She had dressed up on purpose today, since she had requested that Atticus set up a meeting with Ethan so she could get closer to the man. Why should we bring Josephine along? She will only ruin my chance. Are we not bringing Josephine then? Atticus asked. Of course not. When we reach the restaurant later, simply find an excuse and tell him Josephine is not in the company. But Mr. Quarles will definitely probe. Fine. Send her out for some outdoor interviews. Mr. Kowalski, no matter what, I want to have lunch alone with Mr. Quarles today. Do you understand? Tori declared arrogantly. She was now the most famous newscaster in the company, and even Atticus had to show her some respect. Atticus went silent for a while before nodding his head. Okay, I'll arrange something outdoors, for Josephine to attend to later. I'll also find an excuse to skip that lunch. You're going to go by yourself. Tori smiled in satisfaction when she heard that. Thank you, Mr. Kowalski. Soon after, Josephine, who was in the reporter's office, was assigned an outdoor interview. It was about a wastewater treatment issue at a company. Many reporters were dispatched previously to conduct interviews on the same issue, but none were successful. Hence, it was now Josephine's turn. Josephine quickly coordinated with the photography department and arranged for the company's car to be in front of the main entrance by 10.30 a.m. She was always serious about her work. They arrived at the interview location at around 11 a.m. However, as they were about to enter, the company's security guard arrogantly stopped them. Get lost. We do not accept interviews. But the pollutants in your company's discharge far exceed the legal limit. We've come to seek clarification from the relevant department, Josephine stated firmly. That's not the truth. There isn't such a thing. Get lost now, or I'll have to chase you all away forcefully. The security guard had been directed by his superior to prevent any reporters from entering at all costs, as the company's upper management did not want this matter to be reported any longer. Josephine, however, did not leave. Another security guard became agitated and started pushing the videographer. Then, he turned around and pushed Josephine hard as well, causing her to lose her footing and fall to the ground. Josephine, are you all right? Her assistant quickly went over to support her. Josephine's palm had landed on a sharp stone, resulting in a bleeding wound. However, she waved her hand and said, I'm fine. But you're bleeding. Let's go to the hospital and get it bandaged now. I'll beat up any reporters who appear in front of me from now on. Get lost right now, the security guard yelled. Josephine and the others had no choice but to return to the car to seek further instructions from their group leader. Their group leader instructed them to wait and when the company's higher management appeared, they were to rush over and interview them. Meanwhile, Ethan's car stopped in front of a high-end restaurant punctually at noon. Atticus had already reserved a private room for lunch. Upon seeing Ethan arrive at the private room, the waiter opened the door and said to him, Welcome, sir. Please come in. Ethan then entered the room. The instant he walked in, he noticed a woman seated on the couch inside the room, but it wasn't Josephine. Tori, on the other hand, stared with her eyes wide in surprise when she saw the man who had just entered. As she looked at him dazedly, she felt her heart glowing with adoration for him. Oh my, all of his photos cannot even come close to capturing his elegance. She hurriedly rose to greet Ethan. Hello, Mr. Quarles. I am Tori Alford, a newscaster in the company. Nice to meet you. Where's Atticus? Ethan frowned and asked. Didn't Atticus say he would bring Josephine along? Oh, Mr. Kowalski suddenly has something urgent to attend to, so I'll be accompanying you for lunch today, Mr. Quarles, Tori replied eagerly. However, Ethan's face darkened when he heard that he already knew what Atticus was up to when he saw the unruliness and admiration in Tori's eyes. Instead of bringing Josephine, Atticus had arranged for another woman from the company to attend today's lunch. This irritated Ethan greatly. Excuse me, I've got something else on. He turned around and left. 
You've just arrived, Mr. Quarles. Why are you leaving so quickly? Tori quickly stepped in front of Ethan, stopping him from leaving while winking at him. Mr. Quarles, I really want to know you more. Could you please grant me my wish today? Ethan simply narrowed his eyes and asked, Don't you know my girlfriend works in the company? That rendered Tori a little awkward. She quickly regained her smile and stated, It's just a meal, Mr. Quarles. Furthermore, you're already here. Ethan's gaze dimmed when he heard that. I'll never allow anyone to disrespect my girlfriend. He opened the door and walked out, leaving Tori stunned and flushed with embarrassment. Don't men like women's admiration for them? All the men I've encountered have never turned down a lady who hurled herself at them. Ethan's words today truly hurt Tori's self-esteem. Is Josephine really that captivating? How can Ethan be so enthralled by her that he didn't even look at me? After exiting the restaurant, Ethan called Josephine. Josephine was having her wound bandaged by her colleague in the car. When she heard her phone ring, she smiled and answered the call. Hi, have you had your lunch yet? Where are you? Ethan asked in a low voice. I'm working. I have an outdoor interview today, Josephine answered. However, her colleague accidentally tugged on her wound at this point, causing her to cry out in pain. What happened? Are you hurt? Ethan asked concernedly when he heard that. I'm fine. I just fell and scratched my palm, Josephine explained cheerfully. Ethan, however, couldn't bear Josephine being wounded. Where are you? I'll be right there. You don't have to. My work is not done yet. I'll see you tonight. Josephine quickly ended the call as she did not want Ethan to come. Furthermore, the interview she had to conduct today was of utmost importance, and she had to get it done. At this point, her colleague said, Josephine, there's a posh car stopped in front of the entrance. That must be the car of one of the company's senior managers. Let's go over now. Hearing that, Josephine grabbed the microphone and rushed over, completely ignoring her wound. It was indeed one of the senior managers who stepped out of the car. When he saw Josephine, and the others running toward him, he panicked. Many reporters had been bothering him recently and he was already fed up with them. As Josephine had studied the relevant documents previously, she recognized the person stepping out of the car. It was Dane Cook, the vice president of the company. With that, she immediately pointed the microphone at him and asked, Mr. Cook, is your company's wastewater discharge in accordance with the law? According to the relevant department, the pollutants in your company's discharge are way above the permissible limit, and all nearby water sources have been affected. What do you have to say about this? I don't have anything to say. Everything in our company is done in accordance with the law, Dane said sternly. Can you show us the examination report of your company's discharge to satisfy the public? Dane choked a little when he heard that. You were mere reporters. What right do you have to request to see the report? He snarled. You're right. It's because we are reporters that we have the responsibility to report on this topic to the public and be their voice. Please answer my question, Mr. Cook, Josephine stated bluntly as she looked straight at Dane. Upon hearing that, Dane finally looked at Josephine properly and realized that she was very beautiful. He immediately had an ulterior motive in his mind and said, Okay. I'll agree to an interview with you. Let's set another date and time for a private interview. You mean you're willing to accept my interview, right? Josephine wanted to be certain. Of course. Our company will provide everyone with a reasonable explanation. Give me your contact number and I will find a time for the interview, Dane stated. Josephine immediately took out a piece of paper and wrote her number on it before handing it to him. Please make arrangements for the interview as soon as possible, Mr. Cook. Dane's face lit up with an evil smile after obtaining Josephine's phone number, but he quickly put on a decent front and responded, Okay. Give me some time. Rest assured that I will answer the public. Then, he touched Josephine's shoulder lightly and murmured, I'll see you next time, reporter. All of Josephine's co-workers exhaled a sigh of relief after Dane left. We're getting an exclusive interview, Josephine. If our company can influence the following rectification of wastewater handling, we will have truly helped the public. Josephine nodded in response. You're right. Let's get fully prepared for the interview. I'm starving. Let's go for lunch. 
Seeing that everyone was hungry, Josephine announced generously, lunch is on me today. Wow, thank you, Josephine, love you, we're all working for Josephine. She will undoubtedly be our boss in the future. Exactly, do remember to take care of us by then, Josephine. Josephine laughed at that, how dare you all make fun of me. Do you still want the lunch treat? Of course, everyone stopped their teasing and drove to a nearby restaurant for lunch. Meanwhile, after the call ended, Ethan quickly asked Atticus for the location where Josephine went for the interview. However, when he arrived at the place, she was nowhere to be seen. He quickly pulled his phone out and called her again. On Josephine's end, the food was already being served at the same time. Hearing her phone ring, she smilingly answered the call and said, Hello, Mr. Quarles. Is there anything else? Where are you? I, where are you? Josephine returned the question, I am in front of the company that you interviewed. That surprised her. What brings you here? I'm having lunch nearby with my colleagues. Have you had your lunch yet? She asked, to which Ethan coldly answered, What do you think? Josephine immediately felt sorry for him. Come and join us. I'll send you the location. Ethan then drove to the restaurant. Ten minutes later, he arrived in front of a small restaurant by the roadside, and Josephine was already waiting for him at the entrance. On the other hand, her co-workers in the private room were all feeling nervous as they now needed to have lunch with their superior. Nonetheless, they felt honored and hopeful that they could use this lunch opportunity to get closer to Ethan. Ethan's face darkened the minute he saw the restaurant, and a solemn expression appeared on his face. Shall we change to another place? Josephine found him amusing. She knew that this man before her had most certainly never eaten at such a restaurant before. It's not necessary. The food here is nice. Just give it a try, all right. She urged softly. When Ethan stepped into the private room, all of Josephine's co-workers stood up to greet him. Hello, Mr. Quarles. At that, Ethan replied, Hi, you've all had a long day. Then, he sat down next to Josephine. She then handed him her glass of water. Drink some water. Ethan, however, grabbed Josephine's injured hand and began to examine her wound. With a smile, she murmured, I'm fine. It's just a scratch. What happened? Ethan asked again. I fell down by accident. Mr. Quarles, a warm-hearted female colleague wanted to tell the truth, but she was immediately stopped by Josephine's stern glare. Let's eat. Josephine did not want Ethan to know the truth. After all, as a reporter, she was used to being shoved by security officers. Ethan sensed that Josephine wasn't willing to tell him what had happened, and hence, he decided to ask her again later. Meanwhile, Josephine was piling food onto his plate, taking care of his every need. Though Ethan was used to more high-end restaurants, he found the food in this restaurant to be just as delicious. These are good, he remarked, feeling hungry. Although they were not in an elegant setting, Ethan's eating demeanor still mesmerized all of Josephine's female co-workers. An attractive man indeed appears elegant regardless of where he is or what he eats. At the same time, Tori was in Atticus' office, biting her red lip indignantly as she crossed her arms. It was only a meal. Why couldn't Mr. Quarles show me some respect? Enough of that. He only has Josephine in his heart, Atticus reminded her, implying that Tori should stop her wishful thinking of clinging to Ethan. Josephine is just a simple woman. In what way am I inferior to her? Tori scoffed and continued, I heard that you're intending to nurture her to be Miss Ain's successor. Is she really that capable? Mr. Quarles even asked me where Josephine was working today. I can tell he genuinely loves her. Atticus began to worry that Ethan would blame him for assigning such a task to Josephine. I don't care, Mr. Kowalski. If any such opportunity arises again, remember to tell me. Tori smilingly said, clearly not going to give up so easily Atticus felt helpless. Both Katrina and Tori were interested in Ethan, putting Atticus in the difficult situation of being caught in the middle. Meanwhile, Josephine got into Ethan's posh car after lunch. As she still had work to do, Ethan had no choice but to send her back to the company. Josephine expected him to leave after dropping her off. Much to her surprise, Ethan stepped out of the car with her. Why are you not returning to the hotel? 
I'll walk you to the office. Uh, that's not necessary. Josephine did not want to be in a high-profile relationship, and she wanted it to be out of public view. Why, am I such a disgrace to you that you don't want to be seen walking with me? Ethan pretended to be upset and ruffled her hair. Of course not. I'm just afraid they will start competing with me for you, Josephine retorted with a chuckle. Don't worry, Ethan replied determinedly. I'm all yours. Nobody can ever take me away from you. He didn't tell Josephine that Tori had wanted to have lunch with him earlier for ulterior intentions, for fear Josephine would start overthinking. Hearing Ethan's words, Josephine immediately felt secure. I'm yours too. Ethan then walked Josephine to her office. The moment they entered the spacious office, the busy office immediately went so silent that they could hear a pin drop. Josephine is so blessed to have Mr. Quarles send her to work. Everyone mused. Josephine, on the other hand, assumed that Ethan would be leaving. However, the man grabbed a chair and sat down right behind her, randomly taking a book to read at the same time. She felt uneasy as she noticed that all of her co-workers were fearfully looking in her direction and did not dare to say anything, resulting in complete silence in the office. Hence, Josephine turned around and softly suggested to Ethan, perhaps you should go back first. Your presence here is making everyone stressed. Can't I accompany you while you're working? Ethan asked aggrievedly. Just look around, everyone is afraid of you. Josephine whispered. Ethan raised his head but at this instant, all of the co-workers who had been looking earlier quickly lowered their heads, not daring to say anything. With that, Ethan had no choice but to stand up. However, he held Josephine's face between his palms and kissed her on the lips in front of everyone. Josephine's face flushed instantly. On the other hand, everyone else witnessed clearly how much Ethan adored Josephine, to the point of publicly displaying his affection in such a way. And it wasn't Josephine who asked for it, Ethan was the one who wanted to do it. Hence, it was evident to everyone that Ethan was the one who courted Josephine in the first place. I'll wait for you at the cafe nearby, Ethan said, before he left. After he left, the entire office was filled with breaths of relief from Josephine's colleagues, and their tensed bodies finally relaxed. Josephine, however, was bombarded by envious stares, making it difficult for her to focus on her work. Wren, who was sitting next to Josephine, leaned her chin on her palm and asked, Are you a witch, Josephine? What spell have you cast on Mr. Quarles to make him love, you so much? We're just in a normal relationship. Josephine replied, her face hot. I don't know a single spell. You can quit your job as a reporter. Just be Mr. Quarles' wife and enjoy your life. I don't want that. I enjoy working. It makes my life meaningful. Josephine had never considered spending her days doing nothing. She wanted to be someone useful to society. On another note, Ethan's visit to Josephine's office had already sparked an uproar in the company's group chat. Someone had even covertly taken a photo of Ethan sitting behind Josephine and uploaded it to the chat, and everyone in the company was discussing it. Tori happened to be in the group as well. She felt upset when she saw the photograph and looked as if she had been slapped in the face. Tribus TV would soon begin its internal recruitment procedure. Many staff, including Josephine, had applied for it. I've heard there will be an interview session. I wonder who will conduct the interview. Meanwhile, Tori went to Atticus and requested, Mr. Kowalski, please let me conduct the interviews. Atticus was agreeable to that. Sure, since you're experienced as well. I'll leave the interview session to you and Caleb, then. A cold smile flashed across Tori's face when she heard that. I'll definitely fail Josephine, or at least make things difficult for her. Katrina was also getting herself ready for internal recruitment. Though she knew Josephine would be chosen, she wasn't willing to give up so easily. At this point, Atticus called her. Katrina, I have some urgent documents here. Send it to Mr. Quarles right now for him to sign. Where is Mr. Quarles? He is in a private room in the cafe next to the company. Go there now. Hearing that Ethan was alone in a private room, Katrina immediately became excited. This is an excellent opportunity for me to be alone with him. I have to present myself well this time. Men are creatures that can't stand temptations. Who knows what might happen later in the private room between him and me. 
Katrina cheerfully headed to the ladies to touch up on her makeup. She looked at the V-shaped collar dress she had on and tugged the collar even lower until it revealed what she believed was enough. She grinned, feeling satisfied. Many scenes had already flashed through her mind. She was looking forward to the scenes where Ethan would pull her into his embrace and ask her to be his, just like those shown in the movies. Just thinking about this made Katrina's body soften. If this happens, I'm definitely not going to turn him down. Wait for me, Mr. Quarles. She mumbled. Then, she trotted to Atticus office, took a file, and went out. After driving herself to the cafe's entrance, she carefully checked her appearance in the car before getting out. She entered the cafe with a sway to her hips, heading over to the private rooms. When she reached room number eight, she heaved a deep breath, knocked on the door, and went in. Ethan was sitting on the couch. He had a cup of coffee in front of him and was reading a magazine. Mr. Quarles, I'm here to send you some documents, Katrina said, intentionally using a coquettish tone. Right after her words, she walked toward Ethan, her hips swaying. She then deliberately crouched down, took out the documents, and placed them in front of him. With her crouching stance, Katrina was certain that Ethan could see a part of her bosom. She even purposefully squeezed both of her arms together, trying to enhance her good figure and make it more revealing. However, Ethan simply took a pen, flipped the documents, and straightaway signed them. Katrina then slowly tidied up the documents while smilingly saying, Are you here alone, Mr. Quarles? Do you feel bored? Would you like me to stay here with you? That's not necessary. Ethan then returned his gaze to the magazine that he was holding. When Katrina stood up, she intentionally touched her forehead for a while before falling into Ethan's arms. With her hand pressing against his chest, she breathlessly said, I'm sorry. I skipped lunch and am feeling a little dizzy now. Ethan's eyes immediately narrowed. Staring at her hands, he coldly said, Get your hands off me. I'm sorry. Katrina's face was flushed with embarrassment. I've already hinted at it so obviously, but he's refusing to take my hint. Don't tell me he won't react even if I stood naked in front of him. You can leave now, Ethan muttered, his face darkening. He did not enjoy being disturbed. All right, I'm leaving right now. Katrina took the documents and hurriedly exited the room. The moment she left the room, she heaved a deep breath. She couldn't figure out why she couldn't attract Ethan, but Josephine could. What precisely does Josephine have to enchant Ethan so much? In what way am I inferior to her? Josephine, what exactly have you done to bewitch Mr. Quarles? Katrina mumbled as she walked away, feeling disappointed. When she returned to the company, Josephine was in the pantry, appearing to be writing something with a cup of coffee beside her. She was dressed in a gray blouse and skirt, with her hair tied messily on top of her head. She looked far from elegant and appeared rather sloppy instead. Katrina couldn't help but wonder what it was about Josephine that Ethan liked. At this point, Josephine sipped her coffee and gazed out the window, seemingly thinking of something. Her side profile was lovely, with her sharp nose and soft lips. Even her jawline appeared flawless. As she blinked her eyes, her eyelashes fluttered, displaying the allure of a professional woman. Katrina felt her heart skip a beat when she saw that. It was undeniable that Josephine's enthusiasm for her career was something Katrina lacked. When Katrina first joined the company, all she wanted was secure employment while looking for a wealthy guy to marry in the future. Unlike her, Josephine was known to be a workaholic. She treated her job as something that could establish her worth. Then again, Josephine does not need to marry a wealthy man, Katrina reasoned. She's the only daughter in her family. Her grandfather is a high-ranking government official and I heard that her father works for the mayor. She totally has a good starting point in her life. She absolutely has nothing to worry about. Comparing myself to her will just make my life appear to be worse. What makes me angrier is that she now has a filthy rich boyfriend who loves her and only her. I've already seen it for myself. She can effortlessly get things that most people will never be able to obtain no matter how hard they try. The world is indeed unfair. Meanwhile, Josephine's phone, which was placed beside her, rang just as she finished writing. She smiled as she saw the phone screen and she then answered the call. Hello, Dad. Are you back? 
I heard that you've moved to your colleague's house for work. I'm back now, so let's have dinner together tonight at your grandpa's place. Sure, Josephine agreed with a smile. Her father only came back twice a month, so she would never pass up the opportunity to get together with him. After a brief moment of contemplation, she thought of someone and asked cautiously, Dad, can I bring along a friend of mine to Grandpa's place tonight? Friend. Your friend at worker. Ah, it's my friend. A man. Josephine had expressed it so clearly that anyone could understand what she meant. Laughter immediately echoed from the other end of the line. Sure, bring him over for your grandpa to have a look. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos.